meeting. All right, let's go uh, uh, call to order. Uh, Susan, you want to take the roll? 708. Karen? Here. Carolyn? Here. Diane? Here. Addie? Here. Linda? Tim? Here. And Sue gave previous notice. Right. All right, uh, so I'm going to share my screen and uh, all participants. No, 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 don't want to do that. Uh, there. And we go here. I close that. And we make that bigger. All righty. So, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> And then I go back here, get rid of that. Oh, so where's Zoom? Um, oh, let's see, here we go. Oops, no. So, you know that your email is up on the screen, Tim? I do. I do. I'm trying to get my. <sighs> Sorry. There we, we go. go. I stopped it. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, we have the public comment period. I'll remind everybody that public comment is limited to three minutes per person, a total of 30 minutes. This is an opportunity for the public to make comments. This is not a uh, uh, open debate or a, or a uh, question and answer period. Uh, and um, um, Staff and uh, trustees may answer questions if they so desire, but are not required to. Uh, all right, uh, Susan, do we have any uh, public comments? I do have a comment from Mr. Dowdy that he set, it sent in advance. All right, thank he you. He says, my background, certified facility maintenance manager, CFFM, facility manager, FM, and certified healthcare facility manager, CHFM, with 45 years of experience. Over the years, I've been responsible for maintaining and replacing millions of square feet of roofing that include asphalt and single ply roofing systems. I recently reviewed the following reports, MEPFP System Assessment Report, April 4th, 2019. Conclusion, West Roof is in fair condition overall and the East Roof is in very good condition. AJW Solutions Report by Tony Whittington, December 10th, 2019, only eight months later concluded the roof system has come to the end of its intended service life. Library emails, inspection reports, invoices, and proposals obtained by Joe Makula, who shared them with me. Conclusion and recommendations. Recommendations are based on the age, type, and thickness of the membrane and the softness of the roof when walked on. Softness is a strong indication of moisture within the roofing system. Roof membrane is beginning to break down. West roof, replace in 2020, 2021. East Roof, replace in 2024, 2025, perform annual maintenance as needed. Next point, do not install a garden roof. The library was not built to handle the weight load. Also, warranties are shorter and repair costs are extremely high. Remember, in order to repair a leak, you must first remove about six to eight inches of dirt. Last point, don't buy solar panels. A good system is very expensive and the technology will be obsolete in two years. Additionally, you'll experience a diminishing savings with age. Solar outputs are lower in the summer due to high temperatures and the days are shorter in the winter. Does the village or park district use them? Notes, I would expect to spend $1,000 to $3,000 on the east roof annually until replaced. Per library invoices, East and West roof repairs in 2017-18 were $5,912. None spent in 2019. That below average on roofs that old. That is Mr. Uh, Dowdy's. Let's see, let's see, Tisha has her hand up. Okay. 
Fisher, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. This is Tisha Dowdy Ashcroft in Niles. I would like to state that it is unacceptable to go forth with a new roof, roof garden, and solar panels. The library board in this administration continues to spend our tax dollars on elaborate ideas. I often think the way the library spends money is simply to be the talk of the town, best of the best, or simply the Taj Mahal of Niles. And furthermore, I would like to add how unacceptable seeing that email stating that a Niles resident is such a silly man. Whoever sent that should be lucky I didn't get a picture of it, and it is insanely inappropriate and unprofessional that any of you would talk about any of our, any of us, because we pay your salary. Unbelievable. And you, this, this meeting is being recorded not only by you, but by others, so be aware it's getting out there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, just for clarification, uh, no trustee gets a salary. Okay, any more public comments? No, I don't see any. Great, so we move to new business. Uh, Greg, do you want to give us a uh, brief update? But you're, you're, uh, you're on mute, Greg. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, I have some uh, opening comments, just to kind of get everything uh, level set here. So, um, tonight you're going to be interviewing three candidates to uh, be the library's roofing consultant. As a library's roofing consultant, the chosen firm will make an in-depth evaluation of the roofing systems. Um, can I interrupt just for a minute, Greg? I can't hear you. Um, your voice is sort of fading in and out. Okay. Do other people feel that way? My, my volume is all the way up. Is that any better? Yeah. Okay. So the, the evaluation will include extent. I, you know, I got some background noise. Um, so maybe if, if we can mute everybody. Here we go. Okay. I think that's better. Um, so, as library's roofing consultant, the chosen firm will make uh, an in-depth evaluation of the roofing system, including uh, extensive coring assessment of the connecting systems, such as walls, et cetera. Um, the result of the assessment will be a determination of the condition of the roof systems, which will be presented to the board. In concert with the, roof, uh, with the consulting firm, the board will decide on a plan to repair or replace portions of the roof. Uh, once those decisions are made, the consulting firm will draft technical specs, which will then be used as the basis to bid the components of the job out to roofing contractors. The consultants are going to help with the determination of the winning bid and the viability of the roofing uh, contractors, and then work with that contractor to ensure that all plans are implemented according to the design, to make sure that they're not taking any shortcuts. Finally, the consultant will work to ensure that all punch list items are completed and all documentation, including warranty documentation, is uh, delivered so that we can carry forward from that point. Um, before you begin the interview process, I thought we'd take a moment and kind of look at the uh, history of the project over the last 18 months or so. Uh, in April 2019, Frederick Quinn performed a review of the library's building envelope. The purpose of the review was to help identify issues which needed to be in, uh, to I'm sorry, which needed to be addressed to ensure the safe operation of the library and the building's ability to withstand weather events. During that review and subsequently in a report, FQC noted that all of the library's roofing systems were out of warranty, out of warranty and showed average to good wear. Some areas of the roof had estimated remaining useful lives of one to three years and were in fair condition. Others had five years, plus or minus, remaining useful, useful lives and were in good condition. They also noted that there was unidentified water infiltration, which caused wet insulation in areas and the softness in the roof, as well as ponding, which is the collection of water in certain areas uh, due to ineffective pitching. 
Um, during the budget process, this item was put on the list of projects to be pursued over the next fiscal year. Since the overall roof measured approximately 40,000 square feet, and the current roofing cost was estimated to be $30 a square foot, the project was valued at $1.2 million to tear off and replace the entire roof, which was the worst case scenario. Toward the end of 2019, the library started a search for an independent consultant to provide an assessment with greater insight. We reached out to a local engineering firm who was not able to provide the service, but instead recommended Tony Whittington from Madison, Wisconsin. Mr. Whittington had worked with several local firms on jobs and is not affiliated with any roofing contractors. In other words, he had nothing to sell. We provided Mr. Whittington with copies of roof drawings from uh, the original construction of the roof systems. When Mr. Uh, Whittington came out and he walked the roof and then subsequently issued a report, his report said in part, the roof system has come to the end of its intended service life. And then he went on to say, at this time, permanent repairs to the roof membrane would be costly and may not guarantee watertight conditions for any length of time. The library pay, paid uh, Mr. Whittington $3,250. After receiving this report, there continued to be some doubt as to whether or not the library needed anything close to replacing the roof or on, on any part of the library. So we contra contacted John Eleonardo at FQC and asked him to recommend a building envelope consultant. John provided, provided us with two names, Tony Loden of Inspect and Brian McElmeal of Akron, Archon, excuse me. Uh, we contacted Mr. Loden and Ed Sotor of INSPEC and made arrangements for a site visit. When we contacted Mr. McElmeal, he admitted that he, they were just too busy at the moment and referred us to Charlie Seitman of Building Technology Consultants. We contacted Charlie and arranged a site visit. Finally, we searched for another candidate through very credential, various credentialing organizations for building envelope consultants and found uh, building envelope consultants uh, incorporated and Andy Barriento, who we're going to hear from in a moment. So the three consulting firms that you'll interview this evening are as follows. Building Engineering Consultants, or BEC, Building Technology Consultants, or BTC, and INSPEC. All three firms have done several projects throughout the Midwest and U.S., in including large commercial projects and governmental projects. All three firms are we have well-credentialed, experienced staff members who are experts in the building envelope uh, uh, consulting business. And all three firms are prepared to start with their own evaluation of the existing conditions and proceed all the way through final sign-off and warranty delivery. Uh, the three firms have been provided with the same drawings as Mr. Whittington, provided access to the roof with Dave Dabrowski to make their initial assessments, as well as a copy of Mr. Whittington's report. So that kind of brings us up to, um, uh, up to uh, uh, today. Um, I, what I'd like to do is have uh, Andy Barriento and uh, David Balisteri, Balisteri, I'm, I'm sorry, David, for uh, massacring your name. Um, I'd like them admitted to the meeting with um, the, the ability to share their screen for a presentation. Okay, Andy, you're muted, so why don't you unmute and we can get started. Unmute, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Well, welcome everybody and uh, good to see everyone. Uh, and we can uh, tell you that we certainly appreciate the opportunity to make a, uh, our presentation to the board. Uh, Dave Balistri uh, and I have a little presentation, uh, a slide presentation that we'd like to share with you to kind of give you a little bit more of a background in terms of who we are uh, so and what we can do for you and what our recommendations might be. Um, so David, are, are you on? I am. I just want to make sure that I can uh, share the screen here. Can you hear me all right? Yep. We can hear you loud and clear. Wonderful. Okay. In that case, let me ask if you can see this first slide. Uh, we cannot see. Uh, we cannot see your your screen. Mm -mm. No. One moment, please.
There we go. Yep, there you go. Wonderful. And, and there we are. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, inviting us to present to you today. Um, we are very excited to work with uh, the Niles Public Library uh, and help you um, solve uh, what appears to be kind of a bit of a conundrum. And that's the business that we're in. We're ha here to solve the building envelope problems of building owners and managers like yourselves. And so this presentation uh, regards the Niles Main Public Library, the roof study with replacement design. And, and this is presented by both myself uh, and Andy Barriento. Um, so first, I just wanna give you a, a background briefly on who BEC is. We're a, a group of architects, engineers, and other building science professionals. We specialize in the design inspection and testing of roofs, walls, foundations, and their component parts, otherwise known as the building envelope. Our corporation was founded in 2005. We are a, uh, uh, originally incorporated in the state of Wisconsin. BEC is a group of licensed professionals, including registered architects and professional engineers in disciplines, including architectural engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical and structural engineering. We also have other certified professionals and our licensed professionals may also carry some of these certifications as well, such as registered roof observer, registered roof consultant, contract document technologist, building enclosure, commissioning process provider, that's a mouthful, and certified infrared thermographers of different levels. We're active members in allied associations, including the Air Barrier Association of America, ASTM, American Society of Civil Engineers, Illinois Association of Mutual Insurance Companies, International Institute of Building and Closure Consultants, National Roofing Contractors Association, and the Roofing Industry Committee on Weather Issues, which I currently chair. But most important, I think the thing to think about building envelope consultants is that we are forensic analysts and expert consultants. We're not just expert consultants because we say we are, we're expert consultants because courts in both uh, the state and federal jurisdictions have recognized us as such. So where is BEC? The states that you see highlighted in gold are the states that we are licensed as foreign corporations as well as professional engineering. The blue uh, logos are the locations where we have physical offices um, and can uh, mobilize from at any given time. But so we are roof covering experts. Roof covers generally are defined in two ways, whether they are low slope most people refer to that as flat roofs, which is what the Niles Library is, although the Niles Library also has roof areas that start to uh, move into what people refer to as steep slope roof coverings, which we're also experts in. Um, we are experts in wall cladding, whether they're commercial or residential wall claddings, um, as a consequence of us being the forensic analysts we are, we have to understand how these things uh, are designed, how they are constructed, and how they fail typically so that we can figure out what is going on in any given situation. And of course, the foundation is the third component of the building envelope that we uh, are, are experts in and we bring a lot of expertise to bear. Some of the types of services that we provide ultimately on the front end are the property condition reports. We can evaluate the condition of that building envelope and explain in, uh, in, 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 in easy to understand terms its condition and the cost associated with uh, making the, those conditions uh, whole. Um, we can provide uh, we provide property loss inspections for the uh, insurance industry as well, whether that's storm damage, manufactured defect, or faulty workmanship. We, we write plans and specifications for roof replacements. That's another service that we provide. 
We would never write plans and specifications for roof replacement, wall cladding replacement, or foundation waterproofing without first doing that forensic analysis to determine really what needs to be done. Because oftentimes people will look at something and misdiagnose its condition. And then a lot of money is spent unnecessarily. So that's kind of the step-by-step -step procedure and a lot of the services we provide. As part of the forensic evaluation, we provide non-destructive testing. In the case of the Niles Public Library, it would be moisture testing. And we would provide moisture testing in the form of nuclear moisture density gauge testing. In my opinion, that's the best method to determine whether or not a roof holds water, which would be the number one reason why you would want to tear off, remove and replace a roof. We also use capacitance meters, both penetrating and non-penetrating meters. We use infrared cameras as another tool in the toolbox. The project team leads for the Niles Public Library would be myself. I'm the president of Building Envelope Consultants. I'm a second generation roof consultant. When I was born, my father was a commercial roofing contractor before he became an architect and a, a light industrial and commercial real estate developer. I'm a registered roof consultant through the International Institute of Building and Closure Consultants. I believe maybe that was where uh, Greg uh, discovered us uh, during his search for consultants. Uh, currently, I'm the, I'm the chair of the Roofing Industry Committee on Weather Issues, which is, in its own opinion, the nation's leading think tank on how roof systems perform after catastrophic weather events, including hurricanes and hail events. Andy Barriento, who's also online with us today, would be part of the project team lead. He's our Director of Business Development. He spent 42 years at Johns Manville Roofing Systems, writing specifications for some very high profile projects nationwide. When he retired from Johns Manville, he was the National Sales Account Manager. He's been a member of the Construction Specifications Institute since 1982. Some of the projects that Andy and I have been uh, blessed with being involved in um, Andy, with his national experience, has had some of the more high-profile projects than I, but some of the projects that I have been involved in recently include the Island Resort and Casino in the Upper Peninsula in Michigan. What was unique about this project is they had a number of different roof covering types that we had to provide a condition assessment for and recommendations to help them uh, steer their capital budgets for a long-term capital budget plan. The Drury Hotel downtown Milwaukee was a recent high-rise project we did the plans and specifications for. The Drury Hotels moved into this building and without even doing a condition assessment asked for us to write the plans and specifications to replace that roof. That was a uh, adhered uh, modified bitumen roof. Another interesting project that I had uh, the pleasure of being involved in was City Place in St. Louis. This was an interesting storm damage analysis for the building owner where there was a, a wind event um, and they thought they had to replace the entire roof. Um, and after we did our analysis, we determined that really all we needed to do was refasten the roof at the perimeter using a mechanical system and it saved them hundreds of thousands of dollars as opposed to tearing off and replacing the roof. Another interesting project on a forensic side was the Maryland Walk Condominiums in Clayton, Missouri. This was brand new construction where the roof had just been completed, but then surprisingly blew off. Why did the roof blow off? After our study, it was determined that the roofing contractor in fact caused this adhered EPDM roof to delaminate from the substrate as a consequence of their foot traffic on the roof. That was, uh, that was quite an interesting project. And then one of the larger projects I've been involved in was Southdale Center in Edina, Minnesota. Uh, early in my career, I had the pleasure of being able to survey the entire roof 
and come up with a 10 year plan for replacing each and every roof area on that facility. Um, by the time I founded uh, BEC, uh, we were about one third of the way through that project. Um, I've been trying to keep my eyes on it as I go along, uh, but unfortunately a lot of the management has changed hands and uh, I've lost a little bit of sight on it. But that was a, a quite an interesting project. Andy Berriento has had a number of different projects he's been involved in too. Some much more high pro profile projects than I. I'm going to let Andy talk about a few of those. Thanks very much, David. Uh, uh, I uh, was involved with uh, a number of convention centers and very, very large projects. A unique part of uh, this particular project was the time frame. In other words, there was a very short window uh, where the uh, convention center had an opening uh, for us to coordinate specifications, uh, do an evaluation, write specifications, select contractor, and then have the contractor come in and install a system in a very short window, and then have all the deliveries for this very, very large project uh, come in on time so that the contractor could stage the project and get it done within their window. So these are always very challenging projects. And this project turned out real well. We had a great contractor that uh, I had worked with for many years and made the commitment to uh, get this job done. There are 21 men on this project uh, that we uh, coordinated with to have the material delivered and then to have them install it. It was a complete tear off. Uh, so there was a lot of sequencing, sequencing that we were that I was involved with with the contractor. Next slide, David. Um, L.A. Convention Center, uh, another large project, very similar to to Anaheim, uh, where we had to coordinate it, get the materials there, and then make sure that the project was was done within a very short time frame. Uh, and so this was an interesting project because of the specifications and the details that were involved. And we were able to solve their problem and uh, get a great roof down uh, for them. Uh, these are all different types of systems. Anaheim was a mod bit. Um, uh, the uh, um, LA Convention Center was a, a built up roof, four plies and gravel. Uh, so, so we had the capability of being able to look at a building, assess what it was, and then design the best roofing system for that, syst for that building based on its architecture and slope. Next slide, please. Uh, Indianapolis Airport. I don't know if anybody's flown in and out of uh, the Indy Airport, but it's got uh, my roof on it, and uh, uh, it's a single-ply PVC membrane. Uh, that was um, uh, a new construction project. And I'm real happy and proud to say that it's still on and we're approaching close to 15 years now. And uh, the system has performed really well and it's a very, very large project. It's, uh, it's almost, it's shy of a million square feet. So it's a, it, it's a pretty substantial project. Uh, next slide. Uh, Real Entertainment Group uh, in uh, Lincolnshire uh, that's just up the road from you guys. Uh, the specification, this was a fairly large job. It was about 900 squares. And um, it was uh, a partial tear off. And uh, then we put back uh, uh, with an EPDM and then we put back a replacement roof for it. And so that job had to be sequenced. And that's when movie theaters were open. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of the movie people are having a heck of a time right now. But they were great people to work with the Regal Entertainment Group. And they're headquartered in Knoxville, Tennessee. Just terrific people to work with. Next slide. Um, uh, Indianapolis uh, Bus Garage. Uh, they call it Indigo. Uh, that was a very large TPO project with a partial tear off. And then they put, uh, Greg, uh, you might be interested in this, they put solar panels on. Uh, so this was a very good uh, system uh, for the installation of solar panels um, over the membrane because of the ease of heat welding that 
membrane into the into the let's call them sleds uh, or um, or uh, supports for the for the PVC panels. So that worked out real well. That job uh, is is let's see, that's about uh, ten years old now. So working very well. Um, so really, um, uh, what I wanted to impart to you and show you is that we have a tremendous capacity uh, to look at a building and, and, and do testing, moisture testing, just to make sure and do cores and make sure that uh, we're finding where the problems are to begin with in our evaluation. As David said, it might not necessarily be the roof. It could be the walls, it could be the counter flashing. In some cases, uh, you know, it could be skylights uh, that are problematic on a building. So we look at the building holistically to determine uh, where the issues might be. Um, but um, I think in this way, uh, we uh, provide a great service to our uh, uh, clients because we're not, uh, inappropriately spending their money on, on things that they don't necessarily need to do. If you don't need a, a roof and the problems in a wall, we're going to tell you that and we're going to give you a recommendation on how to fix it. So that's our approach and that's our um, view of how we approach um, our, our clients and our, the, the buildings that we're involved with. So it's, as I said earlier, it's a holistic uh, approach. David? The, the last couple slides we have here are basically our approach to the project. And every project starts with step one. And that's to understand what the history of the facility is, whether it's leaking, where it's leaking, why it's leaking, when it's light leaking. That's the, the, the first step to sending somebody up on the roof in the first place, right? My roof is leaking. Um, hopefully, that's not what it has to come to. Hopefully it's a matter of, we just want our uh, roof evaluated to determine what we have to do. But step one, interview site maintenance personnel, perform a thorough investigation of the roof condition utilizing non-destructive moisture testing methods, core each roof area to identify the roof assembly components. It's important to identify each roof area's assembly because if you don't do that, and you write a plan and specification to replace the roof and you find the some unknown um, that can really cost uh, the project. And then provide obviously the library with replacement or repair recommendations with budget estimates after. So step one is included in the pre-design phase of our project scope of our, uh, of our proposal that we submitted prior. Um, and then step two, is design a complete set of plans and specifications for roof replacement for con and, and for contractor competitive bidding. Now, it doesn't have to be roof replacement. If we find that your uh, roof condition is such that you can add additional service years with uh, re repair only, um, why spend the money when you can get by with targeted repairs? For example, we provided the Tri-County Shopping Center in Cincinnati with this kind of analysis. They wanted to replace their, their adhered EPDM system that was expired uh, on their warranty. And we were able to negotiate with the, the manufacturer to uh, add an additional 10 years of warranty period by refurbishing it as opposed to replacing it. So if you don't have to replace it, let's not do it. Um, and, and of course, managing the bidding process is part of what we would provide. We would provide quality assurance observations to determine that the contractors in compliance with our design, and then manage the project closeout and make sure we uh, obtain the warranties uh, that our design um, would 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 uh, enable you to uh, procure. That's it. So, in a nutshell, uh, if you have any questions, we would love to entertain. Um, any any of those at, at your leisure. That's not one of our ROs, by the way. That's Dave's mascot. <laughs> <laughs> any questions?
Why yes. is my okay. yeah? My question is why is my oh I see start video. Here we go. Oh, there I am. Hello. Hi, David. All right, I'm I'm Tim. I'm the uh, president of the uh, library board here. Uh, I will start. I had a couple of questions for you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. First of all, very impressive. Uh, I appreciated the uh, the breadth of it um, and the completeness of it. And I and I like your comment about recommending uh, targeted repair if that's warranted. So thank you for that. Uh, <clears throat> as far as the cost of your services, uh, we have a ten thousand dollar down for the um, first phase of the, the project, and then a twenty thousand dollar upon bid delivery. So that's thirty thousand dollars. And your, your total fee is 6% of the total cost. Um, that $30,000, is that included in that uh, 6% or is that excluded from that 6%? The proposal was originally written um, to encompass a full, full roof replacement. That was where we kind of entered in the equation. Okay. So that's kind of a worst case scenario, yes sir. And it is included. Oh, it is, okay. So let's just, Hypothetically, if the roof costs five hundred thousand dollars, it would be thirty thousand dollars. Six percent of that would be thirty thousand dollars. That would be your your fee for that, right? Correct. That's correct. Okay, that's correct. Yeah, just wanted to make sure everybody's clear on that. Um, okay, very good. Uh, we could go on. Uh, I'm just going to go through. Uh, Diane, do you have any questions? Uh, Diane, you're on mute. Uh, Susan, can you unmute that? Okay, there you go. Okay, thank you. The uh, presentation was excellent and very understandable, and I um, don't have any questions. Thank you at this time. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Karen? Hi. Um, thank you for the presentation. And I had a question, actually, that followed up on Tim's. I, my question was similar but a little different. I understand the cost, uh, you say, is 6% uh, of the percentage of the total roof replacement. What if we uh, decide not to replace the roof? What if we decide to do something much more modest? Is it 6% of whatever that cost would be? Or do you calculate that some way? And what if it was very minor and it was you know, less than 30,000, probably wouldn't be the case, but how, how would you figure out what we owe you under those circumstances? And then I have another question. But go ahead. Sure, Karen, that, that's an excellent question. And the answer to that is that becomes negotiable. Um, because again, like I said, this proposal was written with the expectation that we were going to be tearing off and replacing the roof. Um, I, I think that that was the um, the kind of the storyline going into this relationship at first. And generally, it, it's always better to understand what the worst case scenario is up front, and then work your way back into you know maybe by the time we do our our analysis. Um, there's very little roofing work that really needs to be done in the first five years. So um, it's sometimes we get to a situation where we go all the way through of writing plans and specifications, and then the owner decides to shelve the project completely for the time being. In that case, when a contractor is not selected, it's the average of the bids uh, accepted. So I guess in a nutshell, I hope this answers your question. Um, it, it, it becomes negotiable. We can, we can carve and slice this any way that you would it fits your needs. If you just want the assessment, we can give you a proposal for just the assessment. If you just want the plans and specs, if you just want the quality assurance inspections, you know, it can all be a la carte, so to speak. Um, but in a worst case example, that proposal is is how it lays out. Okay, let's say we uh, accepted your proposal, but decided we don't really want to do the work quite yet. We want to wait three years. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you still bound by the same contract? Can you just sort of wait to do the work and then? We, we I mean, at that point, we're not, I mean, un, unrealistic. I mean, we, we understand what your needs are and they, they change. I mean, they may ch simply change because of something like COVID, right? We may, we may get into a project and suddenly everything has to be tabled. I mean, we understand that. So um, if, if the desire of the public library is such that maybe all we want to know right now is what we truly need to do, 
then take that next step. Once we realize maybe roof areas one, two, and three are three years out, roof area four is five years out, and the rest of it is 10 years out. Um, that There's a lot of value there. And then what we would do is we would write the specification for you on what the repairs or replacement strategies are for each one of those roof areas. Um, and, and of course, we, we have minimums, but we would look at it you know, per roof area at that point as opposed to the entire roof. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Well, I, I guess that so. is one other question too. Um, and that is, uh, you mentioned you, you worked on at least one solar roof. Uh, were there others? And can you tell me what you mean by sleds and support? What, what is that? Yeah, uh, I can answer that question. I, uh, we had a solar division and I've been in, I was involved, in fact, uh, Greg and I spoke about solar uh, when we first met at length. So I have a lot of experience with solar and one of our other engineers, Greg, you remember Riaz, who came out with me, Riaz Hassan. Riaz has got a tremendous amount of experience in, in solar. So the, the, the issue with solar sometimes are the supports. So there are different types of supports. So the supports that work best get fused into the system. And that uh, TPO system that we were talking about, that we were actually showing you, uh, works well because uh, the anchoring system is heat welded into the membrane system. Uh, so there are different ways to install the um, uh, fastening, if you want to use the word fastening or, or anchoring, anchoring is a better word, anchoring system on these solar, and they keep on uh, uh, systems, and the, the PV systems, they keep on evolving uh, as well. So right now we're using uh, sleds and we're using other types of supports uh, that get welded right into the membrane. Uh, so we have to look at what the PV system is and what they're recommending as a manufacturer because these things change quite quite frequently in terms of how they're anchored. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, just one other related question. Have you ever done a green roof? Yes. Uh, the issue uh, sometimes with green roofs is that a lot of the buildings aren't designed for the weight of those types of systems. So if you're thinking about doing something like that, can it be done? Of course, anything can be done, but you have to do a structural analysis of the, the system, the decking system supports to see if your building will take the weight of that tremendous uh, load uh, that comes with those systems. Um, I tell people a very quick story. I did a project like that for Eli Lilly here in Indianapolis. And long story short, Pierre, they, they insisted, uh, one of their engineers insisted on, on putting down a, a green roof and with trays. Worked out fine for about the first five years until they s stopped manicuring the trays and weeds grew probably three or four feet high. And above that roof, there was a, uh, there was a kind of like an observation deck. Somebody was out there smoking a cigarette, flicked it down on the lower roof, and they had to call the fire department because all those weeds caught on fire. So if you're going to put a system like that down, you got to make sure that those trays are manicured and taken care of and so on. Uh, so uh, first step, though, is to look at the structure. Uh, structural capabilities of the of the building to see if it can take the weight. If you're thinking about a vegetative roof system, please keep in mind they tend to have very expensive maintenance costs. Yes, they're they're very maintenance intensive. I I don't recommend them unless you really have an endowment that is ready to be dipped into. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, and let's be clear, let's everybody be clear on both the uh, solar and the green. Uh, <clears throat> the board would make a decision based on uh, costs for that sort of thing. And uh, it, at this point, both of those items are just uh, concepts and ideas. No one has uh, gone forward with that sort of uh, a determination. Uh, sure. 
If anyway, if, Tim, the, the, the real salient point is yes, we've got experience with those systems. Uh, you know, uh, if, um, if we get engaged, uh, we can certainly uh, spend more time with you. You know, I don't want to spend a lot of time at, at this particular meeting because we have limited time. You've got other people to speak yes. with, but uh, we can certainly address that at length. One last point, if you are serious about doing solar panels, which is something that I've heard from the beginning, um, it's important to understand which system you're looking at on the front end so that we can kind of match that system with the roof. That's, that's all. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, Patty, do you have anything, to, uh, any questions? That a no? I just turned on my voice. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Good to hear you. <laughs> thank you. Um, I had questions I had written down to begin with before we started, and I want to thank everybody because my questions have been answered. So thank you. You're welcome. Good. Good. Very nice. Uh, Linda, do you have anything? Uh, any questions? You're on mute. There you go. Hi. Thank you again for the presentation. It was it was um, very informative. Uh, I do have one other question, everything else too, like Patty has been answered. Um, I believe I've heard from a resident that said that solar panels get outdated throughout the years. And do you, have you um, experienced that? So if we ended up going with the solar with solar panels that they are outdated within a couple of years or is I just like a professional point of view? Well, with regard to solar panels, right now the it, it's in the circuits and storage. Those are the two areas that uh, when some someone says they can be outdated very quickly, those are the two areas that they're speaking about. Now, the current uh, solar panels that are on the market um, have silica circuits. Silica circuits. The circuits carry uh, you know the conductivity. So what they're going to move to in the future is uh, graphene or uh, sapphire circuits. And when that happens, <clears throat> the graphene will be about 16 times more conductive than the current silica circuit. So therefore, they're going to be more efficient. So then the other issue is storage, because you can generate all this electricity, but the storage capacity right now uh, is evolving. And I would tell you that within the next five years, the circuits will change and the storage capacity is going to change as well. So if I was advi advising someone uh, that's going to make a large pur purchase, uh, you know, I would, I would ask them to consider those two things. Ultimately, we all recognize that technology changes rapidly. And really what you need to do is a cost-benefit analysis of what the technology today is going to provide you going forward and whatever your uh, time horizon is to recover your initial investment. Um, all, that's really what it comes down to. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, would, I would caution you to, to have any kind of paralysis to enter that kind of technology. Um, if the technology and the return on your investment works and it makes sense for your organization, do it. If it doesn't make sense for your organization, don't. But I would, you know, I mean, because technology changes so fast, I, 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 would, I would caution sitting on the sideline to enter at any given point um, because there is value uh, in certain circumstances. Yeah, and I would tell you that uh, if we were in uh, Colorado, which has sunlight 364 days out of the year, there's a lot of solar panels out west. You know, uh, so uh, environmental conditions make a big difference as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your um, response to that. Um, I think everything else, I had the same questions as Karen, wondering if, you know, you were talking about refurbishing rather than replace. I also wanted to know those costs. Um, I think you pretty much hit that. Um, I like that you... Uh, would be flexible with your um, monetary um, position based on our needs. So um, thank you. Thank you for everything. It needs everything that I have. Thank you. Um, Carolyn, 
Uh, it's good to see you. So I, I think you might be on mute. Thank you. There you go. You're back. All right. Um, I actually didn't have um, audio for a while, so I obviously missed some questions and answers. Um, so if I'm redundant, please stop me. But um, I think what I'm understanding is that BEC is not only here to um, provide plans or specifications for the vegetation and solar panels, but you would also engage in the roof repair or replacement. Is that correct? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes, sir. That um, would be the primary goal. Okay. Um, there's been several months of work that went into this. I want to thank you for your presentation. Um, Honestly, I was not prepared for even discussing vegetation or solar because we hadn't even discussed this as a board. But um, I realize a lot of time has gone into this and I've, I've read the um, proposals and what I'm finding is a lot of the, um, the tasks that need to be performed either by a consultant or by a roofing contractor really tend to blend. There's so much that's actually handled by a roofing contractor. So maybe that's why, since your purpose is not solely to do solar and the vegetation on the roof, maybe that's why I'm seeing all of that. Because I was trying to ascertain why a consultant, if, if a roofing contractor could put up a roof or, or, or take care of it. So you just encompass everything. Um, I, I also want to mention, um, I evaluated, reviewed, and read every single inspection that's come across the library. And um, am I correct in understanding that you as well would do an evaluation of our roof? Yes, we would have to do that before we could adequately provide you with the design to replace it or to repair it. We, we need to understand it ourselves. And quite honestly, I reviewed the, uh, uh, was it w Whittingham report? Yeah. Whittington. Whittington, yeah, the Whittington report. And I mean, it's, I don't know what he's basing or justifying his conclusions on quite honestly. Um, he walks the roof and looks at it and it's, a, it's I'm please forgive me for being um, slightly cynical about somebody who walks a roof and looks at it and says, I know exactly what you've got to do. You don't Thank have x-ray vision. I mean, there's more to the roof assembly than just looking at its surface. There truly is. So no. um, we would need to do that. Uh, we couldn't do it otherwise. So we couldn't okay. do you a good we service. We'd be doing you the right service if we conducted ourselves that way. Uh, right. You know, so... Uh, that's the best way to do it. And, and, and by the way, I, I have done and know just, just about every roofing contractor in the Chicago and Wisconsin market personally. And so the folks over at Sullivan that have been doing your repair work, I worked with them on a uh, project over at uh, Northwestern. Uh, so uh, in fact, uh, a very large project as well. Uh, so uh, most of the contractors I know, and the other thing that we do is that we would guide you accordingly to make sure that you get good contractors to, you know, let's say that the, the, the project needed, uh, you know, through evaluation to get re-roofed or even just repaired. We would make sure that we did a thorough analysis and have the right contractors because I can tell you after doing this for uh, 43 years, I spent a year at Langer Roofing because uh, there were no industrial engineering jobs in Milwaukee at the time. But uh, uh, so many times um, people get off track by getting the wrong contractor. So we would make right. certain that you got the right contractor and the installation uh, was going to be correct because you can have the best system in the world. And if you don't have the right contractor, you could have a failure. I had a contractor right. here in Indianapolis he and I did uh, a project at Eli Lilly, and Owens, we, uh, Johns Manville bought Owens Corning, their commercial business. And when, when they sold it to us, they sold us a bunch of junk. 
<laughs> Literally, <laughs> you know, they cleared out their factory and and That's sold true. us yes. Yes. sold us some stuff that was you know they didn't want to use. But anyway, I had probably the best contractor in the Midwest install that roof with that junky product. It's still on today, and that roof's over twenty five years old. And everybody knew that it was an inferior product. But he's such a good applicator. He did such a great job. Yep. So we would make certain that, uh, you know, that we're going to get the right people in place as well. Um, and there are a lot of contractors out there. Some of them are good and some of them aren't any good. So we know who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. Well, thank you very much for that. You're, it was very informative and, and I, I thank both of you for your, um, your presentation. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you for inviting thank us. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Andy and David. Uh, Greg, are, we can move on to the next one, correct? Great. Okay. Um, uh, they're, uh, they're logging on now. I've, I've tried to create some space between sure. them, uh, no different than if we had them waiting uh, outside of the boardroom uh, to come in and make their presentation. So they're in the process of uh, signing in at the moment. All right. Thank you all. I do have one final question, if, sure. if you don't mind. Um, two two questions, in fact. One no, is, is limited when, to one. <laughs> when is your decision making? When, when will you make a decision? Uh, we we may make it tonight. We may make it next Wednesday. We uh, we need to have discussion on uh, when that decision will be. Okay, so a little bit kind of unknown, but in the near future. Yeah, yes, um, correct. Second question is: Is there knowledge that the roof is leaking currently at the library? Just. Uh, yes or no? You don't have to tell me where no. or what? No. no. Okay. Yeah, David, the, um, uh, we do have uh, uh, wetness under the surface. Uh, it's not obvious how it's getting wet. Uh, we do not have any leaks uh, internal to the building that, okay. we're, aware, uh, that we're aware of. Uh, and the reason I say it that way is because there may be leaking into the walls, but, you know, until you do the analysis, you won't, we won't be able to know that for certain. Yeah. You are correct. Understood. Thank yeah. you. Well, thanks for setting up this Zoom meeting. You guys have done a, 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 a Greg, uh, you've done a nice job setting it up and keeping in contact with us to make Great. sure we got here on time. So thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. Thank hey. you, guys. All right. okay. Bye, guys. Thank All right. you. Bye-bye. Right. Before you have the second person come in, can I ask Greg a question? Sure. Greg, you mentioned uh, wetness. Um, there's wetness and it may be under the surface. You won't know till an evaluation is done. How did we ascertain that? Was someone out? So uh, what happens uh, when they insulate a roof, they use rigid insulation. And it's, it's, a, very, um, it's a very stable uh, surface. When that surface, I'm sorry, when that insulation gets wet, it gets spongy. So there's a bounce. And when, if you, so if you have, I guess, a bouncy roof, for lack of a better term, uh, you most certainly have some degree of wetness in there. Uh, and again, I said, there's absolutely uh, no evidence, like a big hole, you know, where right. water is getting in, uh, but it's obviously coming from somewhere. And uh, until they do the analysis, you won't know exactly what, how extensive it is or uh, where it's coming from. Didn't Frederick Quinn address that in his 2019 um, report? And they made recommendations for um, repairs for the next three to five years. And then also they recommended replacement even after that. So that problem has already been brought to our attention. And I thought Frederick Quinn gave us guidelines how to handle what they observed. So it, it's been a year and this spongy, which is a result of maybe water or, or the, it sounds like the thinning of the membrane is something they already knew. But according to what the information is that they gave us, we could handle repairing that as opposed to replacing the entire roof. So um, uh, what they did is they did note it along with ponding um, in, right. in several areas uh, as uh, indicators of uh, it not being pitched correctly, the roof not being pitched correctly in spots, 
as well as a deterioration of the of the substrate um, in the uh, insulation layer. Um, and what they did was they gave us general recommendations like keep an eye on this. Um, but you know the, the the problem is is that until you remove that insulation, it never dries out until you remove the insulation and replace it. And um, it, once you start doing that, you're into a roof project. Exactly. And, but according to them, it is recommended to proactively maintain flashing repairs on all west roofs until roof replacement is accomplished. Mm -hmm. It sounds like they expected us to go up there and take care of the flashing. Um, and they told you that it should be done three to six months, one to three years. I mean, so I think it doesn't sound like it's something where they noted we need to replace this roof. Although it's a condition that exists, I'm trying to ascertain the seriousness of this. And it yeah. doesn't sound like roof replacement. Yeah, well, I'm not a roof consultant or a, or a contractor. Well, I mean, yeah. they are. And, they, and, they, and I mean, they've been looking at our property for, what, 20 years, 15 years now. So, I mean, if, if they recommend what we should do to maintain the roof, um, so it doesn't need to be replaced, I, I would think we should do that. So I, I'm just I, I noting that just, it's already been brought to our attention that it can be repaired and that a new roof isn't is in dire at this time. Um, I'm, I, I wouldn't make that conclusion. And well, I would the, because I also... Excuse me. For the we have other people. Uh, Patty, you want to ask a question? I'm not finished with my know, statement. We need to go on to the next people. Okay. The get on. Greg, uh, I foiled the, all the roof repairs that have been done on our roof for the past three years, and there were two minor patch jobs. So what I'm trying to say is if in three years there hasn't been any major repairs needed, we're sort of jumping ahead much too quickly. That's all well, I have to Carolyn, say. That's going to be a decision for the full board. Based on, um, I'm just I'm business. bringing up facts that are in all the documents. Yeah, for I the understand because everyone it's doesn't be a decision seem to know. For the board. So, uh, the board will decide on that. Patty, you have a question. Your hand is raised. Yes, <laughs> and because of the sponginess, to really determine according to what the last group said, the severity of it or what's causing it, we should have core samples done. That's how you actually find out what's going on. And we have not said we are going to replace the roof. He said that if it's only recommended to repair, they will tell us that. So don't go jumping the gun saying we're replacing the whole roof, please. Thank you. Okay, Linda. You're on mute, Linda. Also, just to clarify, Frederick Quinn, we hired them, I believe, back for our other um, construction, which was, what, 10 years ago? Is it 2010? I, Greg, you're muted. Uh, 2013. Oh, 2013. Thank you. And, so, and they, seven and they, years. It's not 15, 20. So, let's not exaggerate when we're talking to the public. Okay? And, and they actually... Well, and they actually performed this service for us for the first time in 2014. Right, and they're not roof people, okay? So let's just go with the experts and let's go from there. Um, and I think we need to listen to the next group. Thank you. Okay. okay. So you're right. saying Fredwick Quinn isn't an expert? Okay, Carolyn, let's, let's move on to the next people. Surely. Okay. Thank so, you. Uh, the next, uh, uh, the next presenter uh, will be uh, Charlie Seitman, uh, and Susan just let Charlie into the uh, um, into the room. Uh, you can see him on your screen. Charlie is with um, BTC, Business Technology Consultants. Is that right, Charlie? Building Technology Consultants, correct. Okay. Charlie, the floor is yours. Well, good evening, everybody. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to, to meet with me here uh, today. I, I certainly wish that uh, we could have done this in person, as uh, I'm sure most of you uh, do as well. It's kind of interesting that the last time I was out there and I met Greg was March 11th, just a week before the whole shelter in place issue came in. And, you know, it's quite the whirlwind since then. Um, but what I got here for you today is just a quick presentation. I'll, I'll hopefully just fly through this real quick, give you a little bit of a background of uh, BTC, uh, myself, and kind of our approach for, uh, for your library project. So if I can, 
figure out how to uh, share my screen. You should have rights, Charlie. Okay. Let's see, share screen, here we go. I'm going to share my presentation. Got it. Everybody can see that uh, there where it says Roof Consultant Services? Yep. Okay. Um, so again, my name is Charlie Seatman. I'm with Building Technology Consultants. Um, just to give you a quick background and overview of BTC, this is basically the, the uh, what I'm going to discuss here today, a little bit of a background, uh, kind of go through our expertise, our services that we perform, go through the key team members that would uh, likely be involved with this project, uh, go through a couple of just example projects, uh, discuss uh, what's entailed in our roof evaluations, and further into our approach uh, for the Niles uh, Library there. Uh, so just briefly, a uh, quick company history. It was founded in 2001 by our principal, Kami Formandapur. Um, he's been involved with the, uh, the, the industry, uh, the building envelope uh, consultant industry for, I think, 40 years almost. Uh, and he quickly became recognized as a, an, an industry leader um, in, in building envelope forensics and repair evaluation uh, of all building envelope components. And we'll discuss that a little bit more. Uh, but since 2001, we've experienced continued, sustained, and controlled growth uh, to become the 11-person firm that we currently are. And over the last couple of years, we, uh, we recently became an employee-owned company, um, which you know, gives a little bit of an incentive for those of us, that I, I believe six out of the 11 employees actually own uh, stock ownership within the company. It gives us a little bit of an incentive to, to make sure that our company is doing well. Here's just a couple of our values uh, that, that we've established internally. We have high standards. We, we want to have a value to our clients, um, you know, quality team membership, leadership, resources, innovation, all that, all that stuff. As part of our client services, we like to establish long-term relationships. The, the photo here is of, of the Wrigley Building, uh, downtown Chicago. We've worked on this building for, for a number of years. Uh, even before I started, I think uh, about 16 years uh, at least, uh, we've been involved with the uh, the Wrigley building there. We listen to our clients' needs. We're, we're responsive. We know in this day and age, uh, you send out an email, you send out a text, you're going to want, want responses uh, really quickly. And we, we try to do that to, to the best of our ability. We're also sensitive to our client situation. Uh, clients uh, you know, <laughs> want to see the value in, in, in bringing a consultant uh, on board. So with that, you know, we try to provide meaningful advice. We give you the necessary information so that you can make an informed decision. We explore different options um, so that we can uh, respond to your budgetary needs, realizing that you know you may not have the the funds to do it, anything or or everything that, that you want to do. Um, and we, tr we provide that expertise uh, through the involvement by our senior staff, myself included, and in, in our principal. Uh, we're typically involved on, on in most projects, um, even at, just from a high level, uh, kind of uh, in the background. So our vision is, is to provide solutions that address the problem, not just the symptoms. We don't want to put a, a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound. We want to make sure we're, we're addressing the entire problem. And we realize that the right solution is not necessarily the most expensive one. We're, we're not always looking to, to do the most expensive fix that, hey, maybe there's a, a, a less costly way of doing this that is still going to give you the same results. We consider all repair options and, and when necessary, we'll look for uh, potentially innovative solutions to help address those problems. We meet our clients' needs uh, while practicing prudent engineering. Um, we have a, certainly a duty to, to make sure we're doing that. And we give you options, like I said, and each project is, is treated, treated uniquely. We know that you know, a roof is a roof, um, you know, but certainly each roof is different, has different penetrations different slopes, you know, a whole bunch of different factors that, that can be involved with a particular project. Uh, for our team members, we hire talented individuals. We don't just hire people to, to hire. Um, we make sure we, we hire talented people. And since I've been at BTC uh, the last 15 years myself, uh, when I started, it was, it was our principal, uh, his business partner, who uh, actually just recently passed away this past January, um, and then uh, a, an office administrator. So it was just the four of us. And slowly over the last uh, almost 20 years now, we've grown to where we are and we hire talented team members and we're continuously training uh, 
and, and, and attending seminars and, and trying to be up to date on the latest, uh, latest and greatest in, in everything uh, building envelope. And we encourage those accomplishments. We, we uh, encourage people to get involved and uh, to, to succeed. Our, our current breakdown of our team members are the one principal, Kami, who I'll talk about, uh, two associate principals, including myself, a senior structural engineer, three uh, lower level associate engineer consultants, a drafting technician, as well as three administrative staff. Um, we like to consider ourselves leaders in the industry. Um, we lead our industry in innovation, technolo technical expertise. Like I said, we encourage our team members to be involved. And I'll go through a couple of the, just the real quickly organizations that, that we're all involved with. But we like to train our peers and help elevate the, the industry standards. So here's just a, a quick list of a bunch of different organizations that, that we're involved with. Myself and uh, Kami, our principal, we're, we're he heavily involved in the International Institute of Building Enclosure Consultants. Uh, it's about a 4,000 member uh, group, uh, um, primarily in the U.S., but uh, internationally they have a, a large uh, group in, in Canada, uh, a couple in other international uh, locations. But I myself am the immediate past president of the Chicago chapter, uh, which is a 70 member chapter, um, kind of focused in the Chicago area region. Um, our a couple of our engineers are, are heavily involved in the Chicago area chapter of uh, ICRI, the International Concrete Repair Institute, uh, as well as CSI. So we're, we're all involved. We all volunteer our own time to, to participate in these organizations. We've won several awards from SWRI, uh, from that uh, IBAC, um, ICRI, and Landmark of Illinois. Um, our expertise is, like I said, is in building envelopes. It's, it's not only roofing, but it's also facades and waterproofing. Uh, we also, like I said, have a senior structural engineer. Uh, we get involved in, in structural evaluations as well, parking garages, distress failures, uh, as well as forensic analysis. We do a little bit of historic preservation, uh, architectural and code compliance issues. Uh, we don't have uh, an in-house MEP, but through partnerships with other uh, MEP or uh, consultants, we'll bring them in uh, as needed. Some of the services that we provide uh, our forensic evaluations, uh, evaluations of building envelope components, uh, including evaluations of, of building problems and performing diagnostic testing, which we'll talk about a little bit more as well. Uh, but from there, we typically issue an evaluation report recommending um, repairs or corrective uh, action, and that leads typically into repair design. From there, we can take those design documents, send them out to bid, assist with the bidding process, um, and then flow right into the actual construction contract administration, preparing the contract, making site visits, overseeing the work um, as it was designed. Uh, we also perform uh, a little bit of long-term facility planning. We do reserve studies and tra transitional studies. We perform peer reviews. Um, we also do a little bit of computer modeling. Here's just a quick list of uh, you know, some of our typical clients. Um, libraries, uh, we've worked at several libraries. I provided Greg with uh, several references uh, for, for a few libraries, but we also work uh, with several other institutions, uh, schools and municipalities, government uh, type agencies. We do a lot of multifamily residential, uh, large condos uh, throughout the, the city and suburbs, uh, work directly with property manager uh, firms, commercial property, shopping malls, law firms, etc. So our project team for, for this project would primarily consist of uh, Kami from Anapur. He's uh, the uh, principal at BTC. Um, you can see that uh, not only does he have a long last name, he has a lot of letters after his name because uh, he's a registered building envelope consultant, which consists of being a registered roof consultant, a registered waterproofing consultant, and a registered exterior wall consultant. He's, he's a very accomplished uh, individual and very well-recognized uh, expert um, throughout the country. Uh, I, myself, uh, an associate principal, like I said, I've been with BTC for, for 15 years now. Uh, I'll be the project manager. Uh, I'm a registered roof observer, registered exterior wall observer, uh, certified construction contract administrator, level, third, level one uh, infrared thermographer, and I'm also uh, a certified uh, drone pilot. I've been involved with, the, with the, a bunch of different projects, and, and we'll hit on a, a couple of those. Uh, so currently, I'm working on this uh, FedEx Forum roof replacement project that is nearing uh, completion. This is at the uh, Memphis Grizzlies basketball arena in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Um, we replaced the uh, the roof here at the at the dome, and this is uh, some drone footage that I that I captured when I was out there uh, a few weeks ago. Um, I was also a big part of the, uh, the roof replacement project at the the Abbey Resort and Spa up in Fontana, Wisconsin, uh, right there on uh, beautiful Lake Geneva, as well as the roof replacement project at Northwestern University at their their core library. 
Um, you can see it's a unique, unique looking structure there. So one of the first steps of the project at Niles Library there would be our pre-design evaluation phase. And part of the things that we do with the roof evaluation is, although I know you guys don't have a whole lot of leaks, you, you do have a, a couple. Um, and usually that's the, the first telltale sign that, well, maybe there's an, there's an issue that, uh, that we need to address. Um, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, you guys can go up on the roof and you may not know, you know, what the condition of the roof is, but when you see leaks, there's water, it's a big red flag that, that, that there's an issue. So, um, and a lot of times uh, leaks won't necessarily manifest into the, into the interior. Sometimes it's just, it's trapped moisture within the roof assembly. Um, but sometimes leaks only occur during wind driven rain, which typically means that it's the walls, this directional type wind uh, and rain that, that cause certain leaks to occur. Uh, but there's other times that, uh, you know, leaks maybe only occur during cold conditions, which could be condensation issues. Um, but most leaks through roofs are going to occur at, at penetrations or breaches in the membrane, uh, laps and things like that. Um, but it, as, as I said before, not all leaks may necessarily manifest into interior water leakage. So with that roof review, what we would start with is, is checking seams, checking for punctures. So those are going to be the obvious things that um, would result in, in water leakage. A lot of times it's uh, issues with mechanical contractors trafficking up on the roof and back and forth and, and dropping tools and, and, you know, making small punctures in the roof and then, you know, not addressing those. Um, so that, that happens quite a bit. Uh, sometimes window washers, um, they get their uh, equipment up there. Other times it's, it's facade inspections or other um, exterior repairs that aren't unrelated to the roof that can cause damage to the roof. So we'll go through a couple of uh, issues here that we've seen. This is actually at the Prospect Heights Library. They had uh, quite a bit of failures uh, at seams and at roof edges there. Um, this is actually at the Woodstock uh, Public Library. They had uh, a thermoplastic uh, roof up there that, that was failing. Um, you can see the breach in the breach in the flashing there. There's uh, just physical damage to the roof, you know, dropping a tool or, or just, you know, whatever it is, scraping across the surface of the roof causing physical damage. Sometimes there's just minor pinholes in the roof. Um, this is again is the uh, Prospect Heights Library. Sometimes there's water-filled blisters. There's this squiggly line here showing that there's a big pocket of water within the roof here. And that didn't necessarily manifest in a leak there, but there's, there's water trapped in the roof membrane. Obviously that's, that's an issue. So a couple of things that we would do to diagnose any leaks would be to perform an infrared survey which uh, you know, is a useful screening tool. It's not gonna give you all the answers um, because it only shows surface temperature. It's not an X-ray. It's not gonna scan through the, through the entire roof. Um, but what happens is wet insulation actually retains some of the heat. So after a warm sunny day, the, uh, the wet insulation will actually hold on to some of that, that heat, whereas the, the dry insulation will it'll dissipate. You won't see, see that, but it, you'll, you'll see a significant difference um, from, from the infrared survey. And I'll show you a couple of photos of that. Um, but this, this needs to be performed uh, in dark. So we can't have any solar loading. Um, the sun has to be uh, basically set in order to perform this. So it does have to be done after hours. And, and the one caveat with infrared surveys is that it may not be effective on reflective roofs. So you've got a bunch of white roofs on, on your building there. It may not be entirely effective uh, on those white reflective roofs, but it certainly uh, can still be a useful tool um, in evaluating leaks. So here again, this is Prospect Heights Library. You can see um, this infrared image up above is showing all the warmer areas where the insulation is wet. And kind of an interesting phenomenon is that there was actually dew on the surface of the roof. And given the temperature differential and all the heat that that wet insulation was retaining was actually drying the surface of the roof off. And here again is another photo right in front of a clear story window where there's a big area of saturated insulation. Uh, in addition to infrared, uh, we can perform high voltage electronic leak detection testing, which locates breaches in the membrane using an electric current that will actually send an alarm um, to, the, to the scanner as, uh, as a breach is detected. Uh, the caveats with, with this one is the roof has to be dry um, in order to be able to perform this test. Um, this can also be performed on vertical surfaces uh, of flashings and things like that. So you can check integrity of seams at, uh, at those locations. So here's just a picture of me performing a, 
a high voltage leak detection testing at the Woodstock Library several years ago. And here's a typical item that, that we would find is, is a failed a seam, another one, or just even a small puncture that you could barely see with the, with the naked eye. This is zoomed in quite a bit, but a small puncture in the rough membrane. And at this, uh, at this library, we found, I think it was like 80 some different locations where there were small breaches and a lot of them, you know, they had a roofer on, uh, uh, on a maintenance agreement and he was out there and he wasn't able to, to find any or all of these leaks. They had a bunch of recurring leaks and, you know, they would go up there and they would look and they would just make spot repairs here and there, but there was still quite a bit of, quite a bit of uh, different locations that, that required uh, additional measures. And this is everything here in red shows all the different breaches that we found uh, at this library. Here's just another roof of uh, where high voltage was performed, failed seams, um, you know, laps, things like that. A lot of times some of these seams and, and these openings at the seams aren't readily visible until you actually start taking your probe and start sticking it, you know, around the seam and, and checking uh, through those. And here's a, an instance of a vertical flashing that wasn't well adhered that again, you wouldn't see uh, initially. Um, so with all those tools, uh, in addition to performing a, a moisture survey, um, we recommend that uh, exploratory openings be made such that uh, you can cut into the roof and actually see the system configuration, see the condition of that insulation, and if there's any moisture that's trapped within there. Um, you can check the, the, the laps, make sure that they were lapped properly, that there's the appropriate number of plies in there, uh, determine whether or not there's an air uh, barrier or vapor retarder within the, uh, the assembly and the condition of the deck and any fasteners um, within the assembly. That'll, between all of those components in this, uh, the core cuts will give you a good understanding of what condition the roof is in. Because once you start cutting uh, into the roof, you can find things like this where you've got corrosion of fasteners, you've got saturated insulation, um, where you just push on it and you've got moisture coming up through it. Uh, you can find deteriorated components such as uh, the, the wood blocking uh, and the corrosion of the, of the steel deck and ponding and actual standing water within the, the, the corrugated metal deck. All the stuff you can't really see just looking, doing a visual review from, from the top side. So our approach for the uh, for your library there is to, is to understand uh, what the project ob ob objectives are uh, and understand your budget. Um, and once we get that established, we're gonna, we're gonna evaluate the roofs um, through that visual review, correlate any leaks uh, with any deficiencies that, that may be observed on the roof, determine the extent of the, the saturated insulation using those methods, the, the infrared survey, the high voltage, the moisture meter, and, and the exploratory openings to give us a kind of a, a big picture look at exactly the extent of uh, saturated insulation because leaving saturated insulation within your roof assembly is, is the, the, the roof isn't gonna perform uh, as intended, the insulation isn't gonna be working, um, and it could corrode uh, any portions of your, your structural deck as well as well as promote mold growth, uh, among other things. So the infrared alone uh, won't be able to determine the extent of those issues, um, you know, because of those reflective surfaces. We also need to verify it uh, through the exploratory openings. Um, but in addition, check the condition of the deck, check for building movements, anything like that. And then once we have all that information together, we can develop our uh, repair approach, uh, repair or replacement, uh, any alternatives uh, based on everything that, uh, that we find. Uh, so some of the just typical options that, that would be considered are, are restoration. Um, you know, if the roof is in good shape, there's not uh, widespread moisture, maybe the roof can be restored. Maybe there's just minor repairs that need to be made. Uh, maybe uh, it's a good candidate for a, a roof coating, something that'll help uh, um, extend the life of the roof. Um, you know, maybe not necessarily as long as a, a, a roof replacement will, but, you know, maybe it gives you another five to seven years um, in, in order to, you know, uh, get the funds necessary to, to actually replace the roof. Uh, or the other option is to recover the roof. Uh, if there's not a lot of saturated insulation or there's a little bit, maybe you remove that, those areas of saturated insulation and you cover over the existing. Um, the, the building code allows you to have up to two roof assemblies uh, on, on your roof. So you could have the existing one there, you can put a, a, a cover board on it and provide a new roof membrane right over the top of it. Or the, the last option and probably the most uh, costly is gonna be the, the re-roof, tearing off the existing roof all the way down to the, to the structural deck, uh, removing all the insulation and uh, replacing the assembly in its entirety. 
other considerations um, are just uh, you know overall objectives, making sure that uh, we're meeting the the durability, the reliability requirements that the the library is looking for. Um, discuss uh, logistical requirements, um, and obviously the budget is, is kind of a big factor. And then uh, my understanding is that the the library is also entertaining the possibility of adding a vegetative roof or photovoltaic panels uh, on top of the roof. So the big question is, is why pick BTC? Uh, we believe, uh, you know, we've had unparalleled expertise in the capabilities, especially in, in roofing. We have our in-house capabilities for, for the non-destructive testing, for all those methods that, that we discussed. We're, we're nationally recognized. Uh, we're, we're local here, uh, a single office here in the Chicago area, Arlington Heights to be exact. Um, but we're also, uh, we, we travel all across the United States. Most of our work is right here in the Chicago area, but uh, we, we do travel all across uh, the U.S. Uh, we have properly licensed uh, pro uh, professionals and we carry uh, professional liability insurance. We're independent. We don't have any financial interest in any particular material or system or contractor or anything like that. We're, we're entirely independent and act as an advocate uh, for our clients. And we believe we're leaders uh, in, in innovative solutions. Sometimes, uh, you know, we need to think outside the box. Um, other times it's fairly straightforward, but sometimes we need to, to think outside the box and, and come up with innovative solutions. And doing that is, you know, basically just having a good understanding of what the client's goals are. So with that, uh, any questions? I know I kind of went through a, a lot and, and fairly quickly, but, uh, um, you know, I, I think we have a good understanding of, of what the, the library is looking for. Um, and, I, and I think we can certainly be a good, good fit for you. Great. Uh, Charles, could you stop sharing your screen? Okay, yep. I mean... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. We're back. Uh, we will entertain some questions. Uh, Diane, you want to go first? You're on mute. Okay. All right. Thank you for a wonderful presentation as well. Um, you didn't touch on any of the fees. I know we have it uh, printed out here, but it's yeah. unclear. And, and I've got it here in front of me as well. So um, if you have any questions, specific questions. So um, basically we have our, our, our pre-design evaluation. We, uh, our staff time is, is uh, $6,500 and that includes all the various testing uh, and, and visual reviews and all that. And then we have an allowance for contractor assistance. Um, that's really just you know, an, an estimated fee to have a contractor make and patch uh, exploratory openings. Uh, if the library wait, has a, a roofer that, that they, go ahead. Okay. Um, the things that we absolutely need to do right away, the first, the first items that you have to do if we're interested in, um, it's everything, it's everything that you're saying. Yeah, so so the, the, the pre-design evaluation is basically everything that, that I just covered where it, it's the, the visual review, the infrared survey, the high voltage and the moisture meter survey, um, and then uh, the exploratory openings. That's all covered in that pre-design evaluation. Okay. And that's kind of the first step in the process. We can't really jump into design until we have all that information and know exactly what's, what's going to be necessary for the, for the design project. Okay. And the, and the design fees are, are only estimated because we don't know exactly what the scope of work is going to be. If it's going to be a simple roof recover or a, a roof restoration, you know, it, it's certainly going to be on, on the far lower end and even $16,000 is probably way too high for something like that. Um, but you know, upwards of twenty-four thousand. If we start having to to redesign uh, locations of penetrations and, and start adding photovoltaic systems or vegetative roof systems and adding all those details as part of the assembly as well, that'll certainly increase the fees. So right now, it's just an estimated range there for the design. And your this initial evaluation, how long does it take? It'll, it'll just take a couple of days to do the, the actual evaluation. Um, it, it's probably two days worth of work. Uh, the first day, uh, probably doing the, uh, the visual review, um, uh, doing the high voltage, um, and then doing the moisture meter survey, and then the infrared that night, and then following back up the, the, the following day with the roofer to start opening up potential areas that, that we found during the, during the first day. Uh, and then after that, um, we'll put together a brief report documenting our findings. And that'll probably take maybe two weeks or so, two to three weeks to prepare a report. And then from there, we can discuss next steps and, and how we proceed from, from there. And then you uh, recommend contractors, is that it? 
We, we can, yes. Um, certainly, uh, you know, with the uh, public bid projects, uh, you know, anybody and everybody can, can bid on that, uh, but we can certainly uh, have requirements as part of our bid documents that, you know, set minimum standards. We want to make sure that they're qualified applicators for the roofing system that we select. Um, you know, we don't want just uh, Joe and his truck showing up to, to replace your roof. So we'll properly bet contractors, but there's a lot of contractors that, that we work with uh, throughout the city and the suburbs here, and we can at least provide you a, a good starting point with that. Okay, just one short question. Do you know if we have the entire roof a reflective roof? You have, we have white roofs. So you have a white EPDM roof in, in some areas, as well as a white TPO roof uh, in others. And, and those are our reflective uh, roofs, yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's all I have for now. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you. Diane. Um, I had a question. Uh, you know, the construction phase has uh, $14,000 per month. Correct. So how do we know how long? I mean, it could be a one month. It could be 10 months, right? We don't. Right. That's, and, I, and I think in there, I think we had a, let me flip through my uh, proposal here. We had a qualification about um, item number six in our, our clarification. Uh, we indicate that we anticipate this project will be about six months to complete. Um, and really that's going to depend on the contractor schedule. Like I said, if it's Joe, Joe and his truck, you know, and the small crew, it may take them a lot longer. There's, there's you know, quite a lot of roof area there. Um, it may take them quite a bit to, to get that done. Whereas, you know, a larger contractor, if he's able to put two crews on it, have 16 guys going at one time, he may be able to finish the project in three months. Sure. So it really depends on the contractor and uh, their availability to, to get the work done. Right. And, and also part of that is, what's the scope of work? Is it, is it going to be a, an entire roof replacement of all the, the roof sections? Certainly that's going to add more time. But if it's a roof recover, you know, it could be one to two months. You know, it, it, it's really hard to say. So that 14000 is basically just a, an estimated range per month on a typical project. That's about what our fees are, making several site visits a month, handling um, pay apps, change orders, having meetings, things like that, kind of all encompassing uh, the various activities throughout the construction phase. Great, very good, thank you. Sure. Uh, Carolyn, you're on mute, Carolyn. Okay, thank you very much. That was very informative. I don't My have pleasure. any questions, but I appreciate your breakdown of how we could go about evaluating this roof to identify what really needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you again. You're, you're welcome, thank you. Great. Uh, Karen? Um, hi, uh, I wanna thank you too. I, I know you put a lot of work into your presentation. I appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. I had some questions on cost, but I think Diane's questions sort of, I, I got your answers about, uh, about the fees. Uh, mm -hmm that you have on page 23. So I think I have that. The question I have, uh, first I wanna say that our board has not yet decided if we're going to do a solar roof or a green roof. That's not been decided. I just wanna know, I just wanna know, have you had an experience that it looks like you at least have done solar roofs, is that right? Uh, yes, a, a little bit. Um, a little bit of uh, uh, some photovoltaic panels and a little bit of some vegetative roof systems as well. Um, we don't do it a whole lot, um, but we are, you know, familiar with it and we can certainly help navigate uh, navigate that process for you. Okay, thank you. Yep, and then just as a clarification regarding our fees too, that um, by executing our proposal, you wouldn't necessarily be obligated to, to proceed with all the different phases that um, if you want to just start with the pre-design evaluation for now, just authorize that. You can just circle that and, and initial that. Say this is only what we want to do right now. We don't want to proceed with any other phases. Phases. A lot of times it does lead from from that evaluation phase into the design and then bidding and construction phase. But sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we, we give you the report and hey, that's all you need for now. And you know you can sit on it and, and come back in a, in a year and ask for a revised proposal, an updated one, saying, well, hey, now we're ready to proceed. We go into the next phase. And I think you know once we have all the information from that pre-design. It typically means that, okay, well, we have enough information. We can then easily proceed in, into the design rather than getting somebody else new uh, involved with that. Thank you. Uh, Patty, and you're on mute. Okay. Um, six months is worst case scenario as far as you're concerned? 
Uh, not necessarily. Uh, like I said, we, we can't really determine the, the schedule. Um, it, it's really dependent on, on the contractor. A lot of times it's, it's going to start, uh, a project is going to start April 1. A project of this size um, is usually going to start, you know, right, right as the weather breaks in the spring. Um, and then from there, depending on the, the amount of work that's necessary, it could go all year. Uh, it's possible that, well, hey, maybe we, there's a roof section that's really bad. Maybe we want to do it in multiple phases, either starting later in the, in the fall, getting that first uh, bad area done, and then resuming again in the spring, or spreading it out over multiple years, uh, doing a couple different sections uh, in, in 2021, and then several more sections in 2022. So it really depends on a bunch of different factors of whether or not, uh, you know, how you want to, to, to sequence things, and then the contractor schedule as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're muted, Tim. And I'm muted. How about you? Yeah. Linda? <laughs> and you're okay. muted. Okay, there we go. Hi, how are you? Thank you again Good. for the presentation. Okay, based on what you just said that, you know, maybe we could do this section for a couple months and then mm -hmm. maybe in another couple months or another couple are we paying you still every month, even when there's maybe not something going on? I mean, I'm kind of confused with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I mean, I just want to be fair, Charlie. Um, other presentations have given us a percentage, and yours is the only one that tells us that it's, uh, you know, monthly. So that mm -hmm. scares me a little bit. So just yeah, like, no, I, I, I understood. And that's, a, that's a very valid, valid question. So. Um, you, basically, all of our invoices are for time and expenses. It's it's not billed at fourteen thousand dollars as a flat fee per month. It's billed for actual time spent on the project. So if we um, one month uh, are performing, uh, you know, a bunch of different uh, um, tasks during the construction phase, and we're, re we're re re reviewing payouts, we're making site visits, we're doing changes, all that within a, a month's period, you'll be billed for the actual time spent on on those tasks. Now, if uh, you know it's the, the end of the project. And there's only one site visit, there's only, um, you know, one email that gets sent out, you know, it'll be just a couple hundred dollars for, for that time spent on that, that particular task. And we, and we don't like to, to, to bid our work on a percentage basis because that almost gives uh, the consultant incentive to then jack up the cost of the project. We never looked at it that way, that we want to be a cl the, the, the advocate for the client. We want to make sure that you're paying for... Uh, you know, a good quality system, but we're not specifying a, a b much better systems to inflate our fees. Um, you know, our fees are going to be what they are. Um, it, it's just basically going to be time and expense. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure if maybe you had already talked about it. Did, um, I mean, I, did you talk about uh, the benefits of possibly getting a vegetation roof or not, or? Um, you know, there's, honestly, there's, I wouldn't say that there's, there's much. Um, there's a little bit of tax incentives, I think. Um, but reality is we're, we're not big fans of them because it's just an additional layer that's going to go on top of your roof. You have to make sure that your roof is structurally adequate to support that. Um, but it's also just one more thing that you have to maintain, uh, you have to take care of. Um, you know, and that's, that actually then also uh, blocks the roof from being able to easily uh, review it and perform maintenance on the roof too. So, uh, you know, we're not strong advocates for, for vegetative roofs, but, you know, we understand that, uh, you know, there, there's a need uh, and a desire for those, um, you know, so we can certainly uh, help you with that process. Okay, and then my last question was um, also, uh, if we did decide to do a solar roof, did you feel like it would go out of date after a short time? Or do you feel that they're um, just based over uh, looking at the reward versus, you know, monetary? Yeah, you would certainly have to do a do an analysis and uh, check on the, the return on, uh, on investment there. Um, solar panels are expensive, um, but, you know, with the, with the tax incentives that, that you may be able to, to get, as well as, you know, obviously the reduced energy costs, um, you know, they, on, a, on a roof of your size, maybe this, uh, you could space it out uh, adequately enough to, to actually see uh, a positive return on investment uh, in a short period of time. Uh, those, the, the PV systems are being designed to last 15 to 20 years now. So um, it, it's certainly possible that you can get a long lasting system that uh, you can easily get that return of uh, investment on. Okay, thank you so much. You're quite welcome. 
Okay, thank you very much, Charles. Um, we appreciate the time and effort you put into this very comprehensive uh, uh, proposal and uh, presentation that you provided to us. You're quite welcome, guys. I appreciate the opportunity. All right. Thanks, Charles. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye-bye okay. now. Great. Okay. Our, um, All right. Our last firm is in the process of logging in, so if, uh, if we can just give them a chance to uh, get in and then Susan can let them into the room. Uh, this firm is uh, called uh, Inspec, and they are, um, uh, there's two guys, uh, Tony Loden and uh, Ed Soder, uh, who will be uh, presenting to us. Hey, Greg, I have a quick question. Sure. Uh, other people able to come in right now or not at all? Like um, community members or is this a closed meeting? No, no, it's not closed. Uh, yeah. it's, okay. I'm it's, just open. it's open like all of our meetings. So, um, so what we do is um, uh, we allow anybody to access the meeting, but to see them and to, you know, and have them present and share a screen and stuff like that, we actually let them into quote unquote the room. Oh, okay. okay. I just want to check. Someone's just community member was just asking me if they can still come in, and I'm not sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely great. Yeah. Actually, Linda, while we're waiting, if you click on participate participants on the bottom there, we have panelists and attendees. Right now, we've got Joe Makula, Peter. Stephen Yassel and a Tom G that are still attendees. Uh, I also. see it. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, is there a password to get in? Shouldn't be a password. Um, and we distribute it. Like, um, yeah, like a number. It's on the website. Excuse oh, yeah. me. I was going to say, on mine, I just see the panelists. I don't see attendees. Yeah, if you click to the right, it says panelists is on eight, then attendees is six. You click on attendees, you see who they are. Yeah, you see who Okay, them. Susan, could you please let Tony L in? Yeah. And Linda, if you would mute, I think we're hearing some buzzing um, from outside there. Okay, Tony, if you could unmute and share um, and give us your video, please. Unmute. All right. We can are, hear we, you. are we in now? You're in, but we can't see you. All right. Let's start my video. Oh, there you go. There we go. Wrong video, though. Yeah. <laughs> that's, just, that's just me. That's the wrong one. We got a different. We got a. I got to go to the Logitech, see if this shows up right. Cannot start the video. All right. Start video. Yeah, now I can't get my video to start. Failed to start the video camera. Okay, well, at this it's point, it's not going to work, Tony. It's not going to work? No. no. All right. Just give us a minute, Greg, please. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I, can, I can. You guys have been patient. Um, I know we're uh, running um, almost... Um, almost 45 minutes behind and you've been very patient. So thank you. No problem. There, there see, is. No, well, I don't think that this, you guys can't see this camera though, right? No, we just see you. Okay. For some reason, our one camera here is not. It can't change. Camera. I can't change cameras for some reason. It will not let me change to our Logitech camera that's here. Do that again. 
So I'm doing. There's. That's too that's, weird. That's weird. Yes, but that's. Oh, I that's got, actually we're up there now. Yes, we're up there, but I got to get rid of the background. Yeah, just get rid of the background. Okay. Uh, choose virtual background. I don't. I want to turn the virtual background on. There we go. Oh, perfect. There perfect. we go. I got to turn the background off. All right, then. I don't want to zoom in too much because then I see how old I am, but that's uh, – we'll keep a safe distance. How's that? Perfect. Okay. All right. uh, how, how are you? Um, my name is Ed Soder, and I'm the Director of Business Development for INSPEC. Uh, to my right or your left there is Tony Loden. He's the Director of Technical Services for our, our Chicago office here in uh, – right near the airport. Uh, in Chicago, not far from you. Um, appreciate the time this evening, knowing that it's, you guys are very busy. Um, just to give a little background on the company, our company is a uh, building envelope consulting company. Our expertise is in engineering architecture when it, as it pertains to the, the building envelope. Uh, the envelope is uh, uh, roof walls, windows, doors, below grade, waterproofing, uh, parking, that type of thing. We are a independent third party that doesn't, we don't build new buildings, but we do assist uh, architects and uh, in, in helping them design those components I just men mentioned. Uh, we were uh, formed in 1969 and we currently have three offices. Our main corporate office is located out of Minneapolis. Uh, we have an office in downtown um, Milwaukee and, of course, here in Chicago. So we have about 100, maybe 110 employees. Most of our people are technical in background. I mean, uh, and, and, you know, we have administrative staff. We do a lot of work in the public sector, uh, specifically in Chicago here. We do a lot with the, the schools and the K-12 through market. We're in uh, some of the local districts uh, in Deerfield. We're in Highland Park. We're in uh, in Maine Township uh, High School there, Maine, uh, Maine uh, uh, East and West. We're working with their their architects, white architect over there, uh, and doing the same things, doing roofing consulting, doing uh, providing uh, expertise in skylights and that type of thing. And so we, uh, we feel that we're kind of uh, experts in that area, and, and it is a, actually a very specific discipline uh, similar to elect, elect, uh, electrical engineering, uh, the building envelope itself uh, is a, a very complicated uh, thing when you look at how they integrate to each other. In some cases, uh, when you build a building, you're going to be looking at disciplines like mechanical contractors. You're going to look at electrical contractors. You're going to look at structural work. Uh, we kind of tie it all together uh, with uh, the envelope itself. And uh, so what we we believe I and mean, we know what, what we are good at is uh, trying to or helping that part of the uh, construction uh, move forward. And uh, I guess that's not a very good explanation, but uh, it's, it's what we do. We're, we've just been doing this. We um, do a lot of construction work and design work in the Chicago market. And uh, so I don't, uh, I think we're a little worn out here at the end of the yes. day. <laughs> it's past my bedtime, actually. But uh, <laughs> we're familiar with the building. We have walked the building. Uh, Greg took us up on top. Uh, we are familiar with uh, the roof systems that are on there. We did uh, we did put together a roof plan just for our own sake of uh, kind of looking at square footages, uh, looked at some of the, the – uh, complicated details on the roof uh, with where the walls meet the roof, where they meet the skylights, where they meet uh, everything. And uh, we think we got a pretty good understanding of the, uh, the system. And, um, you know, we do, we do quite a bit of this and uh, we think we can help the, the library uh, uh, put together a design and then go out to bid for this. And then uh, we would oversee the construction actually of the roof system. So there's really like three components of what we do. That is exactly right. We we have a design development phase where we are going to go ahead and uh, determine what type of roof system is there, make recommendations for different roofing systems, uh, taking into consideration maybe. I know there was a, a 
photo cells or the photovoltaic panels that you wanted to look at, uh, perhaps even a vegetative roof. I think that was discussed and then put together various options for the types of systems. Once that's decided upon and uh, we get pricing of what we believe is an estimated cost on that, we would send, we would move that to a uh, design phase and that design phase would be uh, uh, taken to bidding and then awarded based on, you know, we'd go out to bid and help you go bid, bid it and then we would submit that to a uh, um, out for what we'd actually have make recommendations on the on the type system and once it's awarded it would kick off and we'd oversee the entire project we don't we don't bring in anybody else to do that type of thing any questions so far yeah. so uh, guys talk a little bit about your um, your initial design phase and what that involves um, you know, and, and what kind of diagnostics you use to, uh, uh, to move that along? Well, basically, you know, my involvement would then be once uh, you select us and, you know, we come up, uh, I would ask what kind of background drawings that you might have that we might be able to work from. Uh, we then create the roof plan, which we've already done via satellite, but you know, we, we tweak it and we make sure that the square footages and everything that are shown are actually correct based on a set of drawings. And then we actually bring a contractor out to cut cores in all the perimeters of each one of the roof areas to verify that what is shown on the drawings is actually as built conditions. Uh, we measure, we make sure that then, you know, those as-built conditions are then converted into actual drawings that are specific to your building. We don't take anything out of a, uh, a, a manufacturer's spec book or a manual and just publish a bunch of details and let the contractor figure it out. We figure it out on the front end for you so that the set of documents that are actually going out are very specific to your building only. We go out for bid, and then when those bids come back, then um, we then walk you through the permitting process and the award. We do your contracts for you. Uh, we manage any of the allowances that we may agree to that goes into the documents. And once we award, then we come out and we actually oversee the work meaning that we come out two times for every five days of construction. Uh, uh, and I can see that, you know, we've got, uh, let's see, uh, eight people here. Uh, you would be on the distribution list. And then we would actually send out a site visit report via email to each one of you as, you know, what did we see for that day? What did we tell the contractor? We're very involved in uh, making sure that everyone is on and understands what's going on in the project. And that may not be something you want to see, but it is available. So we do ask for distribution on who needs to know, who wants to know. And, and so on a day-to-day -day basis on managing a project, uh, you do get the distribution. It shows photographs. It shows the progress. It shows the uh, any kind of uh, uh, issues that might be concerning uh, materials uh, and, and everything about the project. So it is, you know, it's easy to send an email out and uh, people can see how things are moving along, so they can anticipate, you know, completion or any kind of bumps in the road as uh, we might find them. Okay, um, you know, um, uh, it'd be interesting to talk about some of the jobs that you've done um, in, in the area and, and uh, some of the uh, issues that you faced. Okay, um, well, right now, I'm working 27 different school buildings and get, um, I'm trying to, probably one of the biggest ones, we're down in Ottawa right now, which is about 70 miles south of us. And we found that the wood nailers around the perimeter of a masonry wall were put in with original cut nails. Uh, I don't know if you remember, they looked like railroad spikes back in probably the 1950s. And they put those in and we could actually pick up the entire length of wood nailers around the entire perimeter and they, there was no attachment. So if we had put the new roof on, there was a potential that this 
roof could have probably yeah, blown off, especially prone to a, um, a high tornado area such as Ottawa down along I-80. So we are now replacing all of the perimeter wood nailers with J-bolts, uh, drilling down into the masonry, putting in epoxy anchors, and making sure that perimeter plate nailer is actually, in fact, um, solidly attached. Well, some of the, I think maybe that's it's a little more specific. A little more specific. So but, you know, just to give you an idea of what we're doing, we're working out right now at uh, School District 214, at three other high schools, or two other high schools, three high schools. We're doing we're doing roof replacements. Basically, what we're proposing to do for you, we've already do, done our pre-design or due diligence with the uh, design development. We prepared specifications, and right now it's summertime; it's construction season. So it's three big high schools. I think it's four four and a half or five million dollars. Five million dollars, but it's Wheeling High School, Prospect High School, and uh, Hersey High School. Okay. Uh, we're also doing Kipling Elementary School up in Deerfield. We're doing Libertyville High School in Libertyville. We're doing Vernon Hills High School in Vernon Hills. Um, we're doing Highland Park. We're doing Highland Park. Two, two schools there. Um, we are also doing uh, Repairs to the, if you're familiar with Nile, uh, Maine East High School, is that, that's not far yeah, from you. Maine East. But uh, there was a swim pool that was put in in the early 1900s, and we were helping the owner figure out how and why it's flooding. Uh, and it's uh, it's a been a problem for years, and so we're doing investigations. That's, the, that's below grade. As I mentioned before, you know, that envelope goes underneath the building. So we're hey, uh, gentleman David Alm, who's uh, he's the head of uh, the uh, buildings and grounds out there. So we're doing that. We're also working on a skylight that he's had issues with, and also a project from 2019 that went awry, where the uh, contractor it was designed by a company called Dewberry. I don't know if you know that name, but they're a good architectural firm. Uh, it was also a Tremco system. A year later, it is leaking like a sieve. We found out, we did an investigation for them. We found out the skylights were installed improperly. The drains were installed improperly. And now we're trying to get a company to uh, uh, own up and uh, repair it at no additional cost to the owner uh, after he had gone ahead and paid them. So that's one of the other things. We're working in Elmwood Park right now. It's another I'm doing district. A full, if Elmwood Park uh, uh, High School, we're doing a major... Um, a repointing project on that building, but on Mill, John Mills Elementary School, full replacement of windows and a full repoint of the building. So there's a lot of different things that we do with building envelope. And we're doing uh, North Chicago, we're in that district also. Uh, we're in uh, uh, Woodridge or uh, Wooddale. Wooddale. Just finished a project there for Archon, uh, well, not for Archon, for directly for the owner. In that case, uh, Somebody damaged a building with a bulldozer. And no, they that was McHenry. Was that McHenry? That was McHenry. Oops. <laughs> so yeah, they kind of bleed together. They all bleed together. And I, I actually, you know, there's there's more and more of these. I mean, we have we we finished a project recently in the spring, no, early spring at the Highland Park. Uh, uh, what was the name of that? Uh, oh, it was Maureen, Maureen, Maureen Township. Township. Uh, the, uh, the the tax assessor's office. We put a roof on that. I think uh, I had given that to Greg as a reference. Uh, and I think I gave a bunch of these names. We'd be willing to give you the names of anybody if you wanted to call. But we do. We so there's a lot. There's probably right now in our little office in Chicago, probably twenty five million dollars in work going on this summer. All of which we designed in the last uh, the latter part of nineteen into early two thousand. Got it out to bid. And, uh, and then once it was awarded, we're overseeing it. So this is construction season. That's why I mentioned for Tony. Tony's up at 4:30. All our guys are out in the field right now, making sure that these jobs are are are, are going. Well, because through. well, because of the heat, all the contractors are starting at 6 a.m. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we all have to jump early in order to get out to make sure we're doing our site visits. So and that's just Chicago market. I can't speak for our. our it's probably that times two out of our Milwaukee office and probably that times five out of our Minneapolis office. They're much bigger than we are. But uh, yeah, we do a lot of roof. We work for the owners, we work for the architects, we work for the owners and architects, and sometimes we work on the tail end. If things weren't done properly, we'll go in as forensic specialists and kind of dissect and see what, what went wrong and try to make sure that it's done right. And uh, that's kind of the worst place to be. I think collectively the best thing for us to do 
is work for an owner or the architect. And we work in a very similar capacity. We just report to different people. So even though we are architects and we have 50 or 60 of them, we have 70 or 80 engineers, we don't design new buildings. We, we are basically specialists in that roofing, walls, below grade thing that we talked about earlier. And it's, it is a unique thing. We don't advertise, believe it or not. We, it's all word of mouth. It's, it really is all word of mouth. And uh, our marketing and our, our marketing budget is nothing. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty much it in Chicago. There's another one in me up in Milwaukee and another in Minneapolis. We're just kind of pull things together, get the guys out of the field to maybe get in on a meeting when we're not in a, on a, on a uh, Zoom meeting. But um, during certain times a year after Labor Day, I'll be pulling all the architects and, and all the sign-on jobs, or we'll be going out talking to people like yourselves to try and figure out what's going to go on the next year. And uh, that's kind of, uh, and then after that, they, they don't want to talk to me anymore because they're, they're on the job sites managing projects. They're busy. And we have, the other thing we have that's kind of unique also is we do have our own uh, CAD group, which is out of Milwaukee. And we have a couple guys that work virtually here out of Chicago but architects that do all the design. So we don't, like you said before, we don't rely on these drawings that are off the shelf and say, here's the way this wall is gonna tie together. Here's how it's gonna tie into a skylight. We design those from scratch and they're all drawn in our, in our own departments where we, we, we put together these documents. So that everyone is really specific to your building. We're not pulling things out. And if you went up to your building, you'll see we take things apart, take apart the angle, and then we photograph it, we measure it, and then we put together a design that is exactly what it has to be. It's, we're, not, we're not assuming anything, because the worst thing to do is go ahead and design something, then when they take it out, it's not the way it was built. And that's the biggest faux pas there is, because we can't, we can't manage the numbers at that time, or the money, because they're gonna say, this is nothing even close to what it was. Your design doesn't even mirror anything on the building, and therefore, we have to hit you with a $40,000 surcharge on this, because it wasn't in there. And they take advantage of that all the time. So very clear and concise specification and drawings has been our mantra. The tighter, uh, the, tighter the drawing, the better pricing it that you're gonna have, and the less surprises down the road. And, and that comes out when we bid it. If we get quality bidders, all similar in size, you know, good quality recommended, uh, you know, they might have been in business for 50 years. Once we get those bids in, we're seeing maybe sometimes five, 8% difference between them. And so sometimes it's just somebody's, you know, calculation error or somebody wants it more than the others. When you don't bid things specifically and with detail, I mean, we've seen them go, you know, sway 100% in either direction. So what, that's really what we would like to do is design something that's so clear, concise, and, and usable to go out to bid with that you're going to get really tight bids. And that, if we get the tight bids, we know that we, we described and we specified the project very clearly. And when you don't, it's people throw money at things because they don't know. They just want to be safe. Okay. All right. Um, so unless you have anything else, I'd like to turn it over to Tim to um, uh, moderate the uh, discussion amongst the trustees and ask you questions. Yeah, Tony and Ed, thank you so much uh, for your presentation. Um, and uh, we do apologize for it being uh, later than <clears throat> anticipated. Uh, hearing that you might be getting up at 4.30 really shocks me to no end. So uh, thank you again. Uh, I did have, I'll start with the uh, questions and then I'll go around in a, in a, in a circle with us. <clears throat> your your fees cite a 30% uh, site verification and 40% uh, documentation and then a 30% construction of the total cost uh, and, there, and there's a 7% of total cost. Um, how do you how do you know at the site verification and design development what the charge when we're not going to know what the cost of the project is till it gets down to the after the bidding? We, we base that on our design development letter. Uh, what we do is we have uh, a database of all the projects that at least I've worked on probably for the last 15 years. I can give you cost per square foot numbers on different or various roofing systems. We also have a very uh, close knit relationship with numerous contractors. We will call those contractors and say, look, we're looking at the Niles Library. 
here's what the square footages are, here's what the system is, what do you think it's gonna come in at at a cost per square foot? So okay. they're getting a preliminary look. We're then putting into the design development letter that gives you your budget that you then need to work from with all of the scope items that are included. Okay. That's where we start. Yeah, there's, a, there's another part of this. So once we calculate the square footage of the roof, we look at a number of different things. If we're going to go back with a like system, say, for example, if it was PVC or TPO, that's a single ply thing. What else are, what are the other contributing factors to cost? The first might be the insulation because of the new energy code. I think you might know about that or have heard about that. That's, that's something that gets expensive. The minute you start looking at an R30, which is about six inches, six inches of insulation, thermal insulation. Right, then, then we say, okay, all the perimeter edges have to be raised up because we have to have eight inches of distance from the top of the roof to the top of the flashing, which means in some cases, it's not just roofing. We're going to have to cut into the walls and put a counter flashing in, a through wall flashing. Through wall flashing. So water and snow, when, it, when you have snow, it gets up high. We don't want it going back in and feeding into the building through the veneer or through the brick. So there's a, a masonry component. The other issues that come into play that make create a little escalator here is the curbs on all the mechanical stuff. Again, if you're an R5, because it was built in 64 or whatever it was, uh, uh, and, and, it, and the minute you start adding and having to meet this international energy code, you're coming up another six inches, and all the curbs are now buried, and any water that comes up or snow, whatever, it's going to have to be raised. That means that all the, if there's skylights, if there is any type of portals there for mechanical coming through there, any kind of vents, those all have to be addressed. So when we go in and we start counting those things and we add up the cost, that goes into our little model that we have. And we do have a spreadsheet when we calculate this out to plug in these things. And then each one of those, then we have also slope. In the older days, you didn't need much slope on the roofs, but now they're according to the International Building Code, they're asking for a, a, a very aggressive uh, slope. So all the rain and the snow drains towards the drains. And that's another issue. When we do that, we have to enhance the slope. And we do that with tapering of the insulation and within the roof system. Again, that's another part, a little piece of the puzzle. So it's not just, if it was just laying a roof, a piece of roof membrane over a deck, over insulation and securing it down, it's a simple thing. The minute you add walls, penetrations and contours and all the other things, it gets very complicated and unfortunately very expensive also. Sure. So that, 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 whole, that whole process I just explained is a very simplified version of what the design development analysis is that I propose or we propose in that first phase. Sure. And you will be uh, proposing repair where possible and replace where necessary? Correct. Sure. Correct. All right. our, our goal isn't really to replace. If we went up there and we saw some things and they it didn't have to be replaced, our, our job really is to try and, you know, keep your best interest we would propose a repair over a replacement anytime because they do go bad and it's when, before you know it you do have a replacement but uh, I don't think it's in anybody's we best can, interest to go ahead and, and replace something that does not have to be replaced. Well, I do know that the 1964 edition has had a recent roof replacement done on it maybe about 10 15 years ago and you could probably do some major repairs on that roof area and probably buy another five years out of it. All right very good. Uh, Carolyn, and you're on mute. Carolyn, you're on Are mute. still on mute. Thank you. you for your proposal and your, your presentation. Um, um, it's, it's quite thorough. Um, I, I just had a couple of questions. You definitely um, are experienced with numerous roofs across the area. I mean, just from working with schools in itself is huge and complex. Um, but I'm trying to figure out, when, if, when you come to our library, the first thing you would do is evaluate the roof and then determine what it needs. Is that the first thing you do? Uh, well, actually, I would sit down and actually talk with Greg and, and uh, or one of the other guys that are there and talk about where all the problems have been in the building uh, and really address what has been happening over the last several years 
and really zero in on trying to repair those items as well as replace the roof system if that's what in fact it needs. Uh, there may be a possibility that we're going to look at some of these areas and determine that you, you might need to have some wall flashing done and you don't need a roof. So, okay. uh, so to, to, to expand upon that, our, our the design development phase is a critical part of getting to know your building. And we do that by reviewing drawings, speaking with the personnel there that know the building, they have to go through the repairs, uh, understanding you know what, what was built, when it was built, where these additions were tied in, and then getting an idea of the quality of work that was done. We've seen, we've seen roofs that far exceed their life expectancy because they were really installed great. Whoever did them in the past uh, really watched every detail and it was done good. On the other hand, we've also seen the opposite of that. And when you see a roof that might be only 10 or 15 years old, that has, wasn't very well engineered or designed, and it was installed maybe without as much oversight that, they, that we would do. Uh, you know, when, when nobody's watching, sometimes these projects, they don't get done as they were designed. Right. One of the things that we, yeah. So that, that just happens, and that's just the nature of, of construction. If you don't have a good construction manager on the job, uh, you know. Somebody watching the contractor, the contractor can do whatever they want to do. Yeah, and then once it's covered up, you can't see it. That's unfortunate because you're paying the money and uh, there's nobody there. So we try to be out there, like Tony said, uh, two out of every five days to go out. Sometimes we'll have them wait before they close it up so we can look at it to make sure we photograph it and we document it, make sure it meets with the specification. We want to see it. Yeah. We, we don't, and we've had contractors say, well, let me send you pictures. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, pictures don't work. You know, you'll send me good pictures. I want to see it with my own two eyes. Yeah. And, the, you know what, and the we're not very loved. I'm sorry? It nope. says we're sometimes not loved much. <laughs> In the past few years, I know we've um, we've had our our roof reevaluated by I think two or three people, and um, they end up telling us the condition of the roof and what problems they see and what we should do about it. Um, and th and then I know we um, and I think there's a there's Tony Whittington, which I believe you're familiar with. Um, mm -hmm. okay. he, he provided us with a proposal for roof project specification. Is that telling me what I need to be done on my roof or is, or is that something that I'm trying, uh, this terminology kind of throws me. So okay, so what he's doing is he, he's going to give you a project specification and what they do is that's the written specifications. He may do details, unless he says it in his proposal that there's going to be details, then he may just provide the specifications for replacing the roof. He's right, so not giving you the budgets. Okay. Yep. So that's our, that's our second phase. So what would happen is after we've done the design development and that the board agrees on the dollars that we have proposed for you to, re, to for the replacement, then we would go into the design uh, design documents, which is the specifications and the drawings. The maybe other thing based is on, I, based well, maybe, and I don't know how. As as an envelope consultant, I don't know how you'll handle this. I just know this was done or it was proposed, but it may not be what you're using. You, are you going to? We, we don't we don't use we've we've seen those documents from them in the past and it's uh um it's 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 180 degrees out of what we're doing yeah um, we're okay. you're going to get a set of documents I mean, we'd be willing to send you a copy of a, we can send a copy of one of our specs and you can look through it i mean it it talks about everything from staging of equipment in the back about uh, porta potties uh interior protection uh temporary uh, uh, uh protection of the roof in between the different you know, uh, up on the roof where, when they're doing things, if they leave for the end of the day, it's got to be waterproof. So if a, if a spot shower comes in, you don't have your building flooded. Uh, we have errors and omissions insurance design. We also stamp, we would go to the building department and we stamp as, a, as licensed architects 
that, that put together these documents in order for you to get your permit. I, I've read some of this, his stuff. Uh, I don't think he's all the way there. I think he has a technical background, but I don't think you're getting the whole package uh, the way you really need to for this project. So if uh, something does go wrong, uh, you'll have, you got some real concrete to stand on with a, a company like ourselves. Like I said, we've been around since 69. We have, we have all the credentials, we have project experience. And um, I'm not sure what they have up there, this Anthony guy. I've read some of his things. I think he, he was with uh, Rene Dupree. Rene Dupree yeah, up time. there out of Madison. And I'm not sure if they're in. I think he just died, actually. Rene, Rene just died, yes. Yeah. So that's about, we know. Okay. Well, what I, what I, what I want to, what I think I'm understanding is envelope consultants have numerous employees for different aspects of this whole project. Um, I, I've read some notes, I think they're from your company, Inspect, where you're, you, you would have an architect, you, you have an administration assistant handling like documentation, somebody handles permits, and I also noticed that- Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, no, wait. Oh, they, they're probably no. looking at something. They're looking at, it, maybe you're looking at, you know, the documents, but if- Basically, if I take, if let's say you award to inspect, you're going to get me as Tony Loden. I am going to be your senior consultant. Right. I'm going to start with the, the, I'm going to do the design development. Once I work with you as the board and we talk and we come to an agreement on the budget to be spent, I will be the one writing the specifications. I will be the one doing all of the, uh, drawing sketches that actually go to our CAD department. I'm the one that actually will hold the pre-bid. I will be the one that holds the pre-construction meeting. I will be there for the bid opening. I will be there on, you know, myself, not every single time for a site visit because I have other people that help me do that, but I try to be on site at least every 10 days. Yeah, so we're not, we're not going to bring somebody in. Somebody is going to take the lead as a project manager. He will delegate or she will delegate uh, uh, the, uh, some of the sub duties in there. For example, the computer aided design. There's always administrative stuff putting together all these big stacks of, 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 of uh, contracts and things like that. And so that's what that meant. So there is a dedicated person that is there from the very beginning and to the very end. And, uh, but there is, we do need, he can't do it alone. Can't do it alone. Uh, I do say so. So, so that's why contracts like would, would be done alone. by, contracts yep. would be done by an administrative assistant. Right. Yes. And so I saw that listing and um, what I, what I wanted to ask you was, um, so you're, Definitely well versed in the roof replacement or repair. Are you also um, going to handle if we if we decide the vegetation solar panels? Is that something you would do? Uh, I, can, I do. I've done that all. Yes. Yeah. We Tony. Tony has done this. We've done uh, the the vegetative roofs before, uh, extensive or intensive. So he's worked with vendors, live roof, and some of the other ones. So. We work, he's worked with the structural, we have a structural engineer group too, that would go ahead and do the calculations for the loading on that to make sure it can, it can support that the, 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 the materials up there. The photo panels, we were talking to Greg about this on when he was just kind of picking our head. Uh, we've, got, we've got the solar panel project going in Highland Park right now. We did one in 214 where you, you build the, you, you, design the floor as well. you design the stanchions on the roof. They have to be all calculated. We have to have a structural engineer, which we have in house, or we would have bring somebody in, maybe licensed here in the Illinois, to go ahead and make sure that the wind uplift is met on these things because the manufacturer has a certain standard on how they they'll allow what they'll allow you to mount them on. You just can't just let them float on there or sit on uh, on pedestals. They have to be supported right into the superstructure of the building, and that's a very important part of it. And we need to get somebody that's going to go in and stamp it, send it into the into the city for the building permit. They're going to want to see that there's a a stamp from a, a registered professional engineer that has can right. sign off on that. So. So there's a lot of disciplines that come in and slip around. That's hard. That's not a big component of that project. The vegetative part, yeah, to figure out the live loads on there with snow loads and wet uh, for the for the vegetative stuff, it becomes kind of complicated. And so in that case, we if you didn't have drawings available, we'd probably have to go and take some go to the ceilings and measure some beams 
and some, uh, but I have to trust them and trust us to make sure they can support those things. Surely. So that would be all hail to Tony. Okay, well, you know, and I know you guys get up at 4.30 in the morning. Um, I remember working. I do. I don't know about him. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible, but um, you beat the heat. But thank you so very much for yes. all of your information. Okay. We're running low right now on blood sugar, but sorry. <laughs> I think the last time we talked to Greg, he says, you know, man, don't drink so much coffee. We are now, it's, I need coffee. Yeah, right. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, Karen, do you have anything for us? And you're on mute. No, nope. Karen says no. Linda? Nope. Patty, we can't see you anymore. you have anything for these? Uh, yes. I was, um, God. After listening to all of that, I think I, I have to look at my notes again because I had something. Oh, I know what it is. Um, when you're evaluating the roof, what methods are you using? I heard you talk about coring. Is there any other methods you use to evaluate the roof before you do write up your CAD drawings and all that stuff? My 35 years of experience uh walking your roof it's, we basically it's a, called a visual survey we would uh, walk the roof look at it visually um we take a core to see what's there what is the thermal insulation layers what is it built what's the deck construction uh we're also looking at outside perimeter edges so thermography or necessary. Um, we could use thermography if necessary but you know it's really that's something that you would do for a re for repairs type of a deal. Um, if we feel that that's necessary, then we would recommend that to you in the design development. Yeah. One, of the, one of the issues when we walk the roof, if there's any squishy up there, that means the insulation is now soft like a, like a kitchen sponge. And you can, mm -hmm. when you walk over, it's not firm. If that's the case, then we wanted, to, I, we wanted to figure out the area that is soft. Maybe we say, oh, it's only a small area and the rest of the roof system is really good. We can shoot it with an infrared camera. We wait till after dusk. Once the heat is in, uh, kind of well, the heat is gone, it stays the, the wet stays hot longer. So we'll get blue around the perimeter, and all the wet spots will heat up in red. So we'll get a thermograph, and we can we can measure it out, and we can say, okay, we got this amount of square footage is is, is actually potentially wet. Uh, the other thing is we can do a, we can we can do a moisture meters and figure out what's on there with a single ply roofs over there. It'd be real easy to do that if we couldn't oh, tell just by walking on it. And yeah, it's so, easier just to walk on it and look at it visually. And, and there was a few little squishy areas we found, by the way. So uh, we yeah, went up so there for the because of your experience. If I'm understanding you correctly, you should be able to spot some of this stuff without necessarily using these. But if you feel it's necessary, then use them. That is correct. Yes. Now, if, if, if we found an area, if we were, after we did this initial and we say this, and we're going to go ahead and say this, this roof is at the end of its life expectancy, and we were going to be engaged to go ahead and do a design for a new, then we would go in and we'd, we'd start cutting corners. We'd, not cutting corners, literally, but cutting out cores around corners. corners, and we'd start to take some construction details so we know how things are. How, how deep does the, the uh, masonry go? How are the flashings are? What's the height? And we take measurements. So there's the pre-screen to see whether or not what the condition of the roof is, and then there would be the pre-design and design development. So there's kind of two different things. One is more detailed than the other. And, uh, but, you know, our goal really is to just give as much information to you so you can make the right decision. And if it meant just some repairs to get you five years out, then that's what we're going to, we're going to go after. If, uh, if you say, well, money's available now and we have the other plans and we think that we would like to avoid the escalation in costs in the next five years, because it goes up by about 6% a year, says, well, okay, let's do it now rather than look at 18, 20% in five years then you might say, okay, let's do it now and give us a price and uh, let's let's move forward with the design and get a bid out. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, thank you very, very much, Tony and Ed. Um, hey, Tim. Yes, Greg. I, I, just, I just have one follow-up question um, uh, going back to something, if you don't mind, if that, is it all right? Oh, go right ahead. That's, that's fine. Hey guys, um, you mentioned uh, something in an earlier comment about interior considerations. Um, 
I, I can't remember specifically the words that you use, interior damage. Interior protection. In, okay. This is, so this so, is a library. <laughs> well, is that solely noise or are there other considerations? Well, there's, there's other considerations because when you are going to have a roofing contractor working above the roof deck, there's going to be dust fluttering down and all of your drop ceilings are, again, attached to that structure. As the contractor bounces around, so does your drop ceiling, and you're gonna have dust fluttering down inside of the library space. We wanna make sure that by hanging or using interior protection, we are protecting all of the books that happen to be on that second floor. Um, I think the one, I walked on the one side, it was all a lot of your reference books that were probably, um, you're not, you're not going to be able to replace them. They're irreplaceable. So we want to make sure that those are protected. It also gives you a little bit better protection if the roofing contractor doesn't do a tie-in and you might get a little bit of water. It's a second level of defense to keep the water out of the library itself. We, we, had, a, we had a project some years back, and we, we put a roof on over the – or actually, we put a roof on over the American Dairy Association in Rosemont there – and they had the LC, the cow, you remember all those original, uh, they were all original lithographs and they were beautiful. They were sketched out and they had them in this, this, this temperature control uh, room. I mean, it was huge. And every time you went through it was from the 20s, 30s. Well, there was a roof leak from the contractor not doing it. They did not put the interior protection on it. And it was almost $120,000 to do the restoration on some of those irreplaceable documents. Well, yeah, certainly, we learn lessons like that. And so whenever we see, if it was just a warehouse and you had a couple of forklifts out there, not so worried about it. But when you have books and you have things like that on the inside, they can get dirty, they can get damaged, like you said, maybe a leak here or something or a trickle on this, it's always prudent to make sure you address that. And we go ahead and uh, uh, try and keep it protected. And that's why we would probably, in the specification, require that the contractor takes responsibility for the interior protection in the event that they damage anything. Not only they were responsible for protecting it, but if there is any damage, they're going to have to end up paying for it. They pay for it, yes. So it's a double sword, but by giving them the responsibility to do the protection under their contract, they're, they're more diligent about making sure it's done right because if it does get damaged, they're going to have to eat it, and it's expensive. Okay. All right, Tim, that's all I had. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Greg. Uh, again, uh, thank you, Tony and Ed. Um, great presentation. Appreciate you guys coming up and uh, spending time with us. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank, thank you very much. Bye-bye nice okay. Okay. Bye -bye now. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All righty. I know it is a little late, but... Um, <clears throat> I think maybe uh, I'm going to at least make a motion for one of these uh, contractors. Oh, I have some questions before you make a motion. Okay, I thought we would make a motion and then go through and ask our questions. Because that's kind of like our procedure. Make a motion. Oh, we haven't even discussed this yet. Okay, fine. You, we can't be discussed it until we make a motion? Isn't yeah, it? that's kind of like that's our procedures, right? We make a motion, somebody seconds it. Then we go around and we have our discussions. Oh, well, I didn't even think we were at a position to be voting on this, but go ahead. You could be right. I don't know. That's, that's part of our discussion. So at this, mo at this point, I'm making a motion to accept the proposal from Building Envelope Consultants, BEC, for the providing of consulting services for the re uh, roof evaluation, repair, or replacement project. If I get a second, we can discuss it. Okay, let Diane second it. All right, good, Diane seconds it. All right, that's it, so I, now it's out there. Um, uh, I'll give you my reasons, my personal reasons for it. Uh, I liked their, um, their cost, first of all. Uh, it is the, uh, it looks to be like the lowest cost of the three, not that that means they're the cheapest or the least, um, um, apprehensive, but um, BTC, I didn't like that uh, six month, it's $14,000 a month. I, I just didn't like their um, fluidity of the, of the cost. 
uh, in spec was at 7% and BEC is at 6%. Um, and I also like the comprehensive nature of their organization uh, that seemed to me to be the most um, uh, straightforward and clearly written out of their proposals of what they're actually going to do. So that's my opinion. Um, go around. Um, Diane, you got any input on, on this? Okay, I um, I really did like uh, BEC, and I, I like these two guys, too, uh, and from Inspect, although I didn't get a clear, I couldn't get a clear message about how, what the cost would be. I, I know they can't tell me, but, you know, exactly, but uh, I don't know, they, I, I was more impressed with the BEC presentation. I think they had it all together. I like the idea that they will assess the building and then choose what's best for us. You know, they determine the need um, that Maine Niles Township or our library would have. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. That's all. That's all. Uh, are you done, Diane? Yes. Okay. I, I found it hard to compare these three in terms of cost because they were all sort of vague and fluid. Like they, they, they all were sort of indefinite as to how much it would actually cost. Maybe that's the nature of it. I don't know. Um, but they, you know, we can negotiate it. We can change it. We're willing to work with you. All kinds of phrases like that, which may, made me think, I don't really know how much this is going to cost, no matter which one we choose. I did sort of like BTC in that they, their fee was not a percentage of what we spend altogether. So uh, the other two, it would seem they do have some incentive to see us spend the most money. So that would increase their fee, be it 6% or 7%. Uh, but I did like BTC because it was a, a flat rate and, and I did like that. I also thought BTC had the probably the most extensive um, Written pre, uh, written information that we received. The other two were 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 not as as thorough as what we got from BTC. So I like BTC of uh, the ones that uh, we have here. Okay, um, Linda. It's really difficult because I mean, all three of them I felt were very powerful in their experience. I mean, maybe powerful isn't the right word, but um, they're all seem, I, I don't think we could go wrong. Let's just say that I think they all sound excellent. Um, I did like, uh, what was the last ones? Insight, Inspect. 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 I like them because they're working so locally. However, they sound so busy, it makes me nervous. Like, are they gonna have enough time for us? <laughs> But um, I did originally prefer BTC based on their extensive um, experience. However, the presentation of what was the first one that we be easy be um, after they cr had their presentation, they had the ex the same experience, um, and they were very impressive and their flexibility on, and, but, but all of them were. So it's so, I agree with the Karen, it's hard. Um, so, I mean, if we're going to, I don't know. Um, I mean, if we're going to go <sighs> with experience, they all had it. I, I mean, I like that they said that they were fluid in their, um, you know, nothing was specific that it's going to be a tear off. It's going to be a replacement. I like that they said, you know, that they're going to core each roof, but all of them said they were going to core each roof um, in the design phase that they're going to uh, look at each roof individually, repair and replace only when needed. I mean, I liked that right off the bat. That was, you know, refurbishing rather than replace. Um, Carbon, I like their quote carbon slice based on your needs, flexibility. I mean, I liked all the buzzwords. I mean, yes, their price is the cheapest and it's the least variable, 
of uncertainty. So I guess as being um, sound and, and money wise, I mean, if we're going with a consultant, they did, I, I will say one thing, I was very unsure about getting a consultant coming to this meeting. I was like, why can't we just do this ourselves? Like, why can't Dave just manage this? Oh, no. <laughs> but, but, well, no, no, no. But I mean, honestly, I mean, what do I know? I'm a librarian. We can't lost. hear you. Can't hear you. Linda, we lost you. Can't hear you. Mute, mute. No, she's not muted. We no, just... she's not mute. She's just not. We mute. can't hear her. Can't hear you. Uh, we lost you, Linda. There you go. Okay. okay. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Um, okay. So, no, I mean, I now I completely, completely understand why we need a consultant to oversee everything. So, mm -hmm. I guess with everyone, the scope of everything, I... I just feel like maybe I, I think we need to go with the lowest bid just because I, I, I think that they're all awesome. And I, but I, and I did like all three, so it's very hard for me to decide. So um, I did like all their answers and I, I think I'd have to go with BEC. BEC, was that the lowest bid? Yeah. At the, yeah, the right yeah. Say, Karen. I think it's hard to tell who has the lowest bid. I mean, you can tell 6% is obviously lower than 7%. Right. But otherwise, it's apples and oranges because they were all very squishy in terms of what their fees actually would be. And they what? kept saying, you know, well, we can change this and, you know, this is negotiable. So I don't really know what it would end up dealing well, with uh, each, any one of these three. But so, to be honest, Karen, you know, with the, what's the middle, what's the other one, BTC? BTC. Yeah. They're saying the scope of work might be six months. Then if you go, you know, six months and you don't know because then they're hourly, well, what's their hourly rate? I, I, I yeah, just, I, I it's agree. so, if for me, you know, I mean. Yeah, because I have a constraint. to me that I, but I understand at first I thought myself, I think they're the lowest, you know, based, I was shooting numbers. Like I was going, you know, looking up numbers and thinking, okay, if it's a million dollar project, it's this amount of money based on two months or three months. I was looking at everything when I was looking at it this afternoon. Um, you just don't know with the way that they're proposing it. It's just, to me, the way that it's proposed, even though they said it's the least you know, that they feel that that's the best way to propose it rather than a percentage. To me, it was looking like, hey, let's stretch this out more because it's hourly rather than, hey, this is flat, this is it, let's get it done and let's do it, let's get this done in a month. It sounded like a problem. Is, let's the do this. Problem is we don't know what we want done either. Well, <laughs> right. this is yeah, are we having a whole roof? Are we having half? Are we just uh, pitching? Are that's we like the, green? That's the whole are point we, of the first phase just, of any of these days. Right, right. 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 They can't give us a number. Right, they can't, right, so. They're the experts and they're our safeguard to protect us from a contractor who might come in and hit a little bit. And so, and I, yeah, honestly, that was one reason why I like BTC in the beginning because they had the waterproofing experience and component like that piece of it. But then when you, when BEC was telling all their um, expertise, they had everything. They just didn't put it in their documentation originally. Well, that's the problem with the f first or, and the last one. It was the middle one who had this huge document compared to the other two. And so, that's why you had to listen to the presentation, in my opinion. I know it's difficult. I understand. It's hard. Very much so. Okay, Patty, you can go next. Apparently you want to. Uh, <laughs> to me, I, even looking at this last one, I was impressed by all of them. But the last group, I, they have all these fees down here. Unless that's to explain their percentages, I don't know. Because the page before they're, where they're actually telling what the percentages are, they're, they're talking about... Uh, it's 200 per site visit. It's this per site visit. 
So it's like, like you say, the very, how, what is it actually going to be? There is no way to really tell. So. Okay. Carolyn. Alrighty. Um, okay. So all three of them are envelope consultants. And um, what it comes down to is they're either going to subcontract a lot of this and they're not going, none of them are going to be able to give us definite dates because between who they hire to do all these different phases that they've created for us in terms of what they think we need, there's, you'll never know what the timeline is. And then secondly, some of them do have many, many projects and it's summer. So, and, and you know, we are in the middle of a pandemic. So as, as great as it is that some of them are busy, as you notice, there's schools who have already probably had these, con these, these jobs in their referendums. But, you know, they're going to grab at anything they can get because they need to keep working. But I don't think as far as um, getting a deadline, that's ever feasible. And, and I have, because when you have so many different people working on a project, it just happens. But I noticed when I read all of these documents that these consultants perform the same um, work that's done by a large um, roofing contractor. I mean, somebody has to handle permits, somebody has to, uh, someone, always someone has to design specs. You don't necessarily have to go to an envelope um, consultant. I know they tell us that they're responsible for this and for that, but that's another breakdown. Just like the, the huge job we had at the library already for the renovations, you know, the, the, the head company tells us this is how it's supposed to work. And then we're in board meetings hearing this guy didn't do his end and this one didn't do that end. So to think that an envelope consultant is the answer, I think is a misnomer. They definitely, the three of them did provide information, but I've seen roofing contractors with just as thorough um, a bid to do, well, maybe a roof replacement, because I'm not sure what on earth it is that we're looking for. We have a couple of things going on. But I, I do have a concern about who works for them. Um, I, I've read, I, I got a ton of documents regarding this whole roofing process. And um, what I'm reading is that people aren't registered or certified. I mean, these companies just pick people. So I think, I think we need to really understand who it is we're going with. Plus, I believe we didn't even publicly advertise this. These were three companies that Greg particularly sought out. So we need to really understand who's working for whom and who is licensed. And, and this one company isn't even in Illinois. They're all over the United States. So who's the licensed contractor? Somebody else is going to hire a roofing contractor that's licensed in Illinois. And we're paying all this money to an envelope consultant. I, I don't think we're, we're spending enough time to figure out what we need. But in terms of what we need and the fact that we've already had two quotes on the roof, we've had two, Tony Whittington and FQ, FQC, they all went on the roof, they walked, some people think they should walk around, some people think they should perform tests. Personally, I think performing tests, if we're worried about the saturated um, I, membrane or whatever it is, makes sense to me. I don't know if we need to in, engage a, um, an envelope consultant to do some testing. Again, we have not had any major problems with the roof to even entertain this massive type of construction. But I have a couple other things to bring out. We spent a great deal of time trying to figure out the, about having people come out regarding vegetation and solar panels. I've seen emails going as far back as January. I don't know when this board approved that, but that's quite a bit of money and quite a bit of time. And now we're going to talk about, are we going to do this? 
I feel like we should have probably made the decision initially before we spent all this time. Um, uh, that's my one concern. Please don't interrupt. And then I'm secondly, raising my hand. I'm not saying and anything. I was looking at um, INSPEC, some of their correspondence. They do mention Tony Whittington would be the project manager project manager so i'm kind of concerned there wasn't much positivity about tony whittington we know he's not degreed or licensed or certified but yet he's already going to be a project manager that's a little i thought he was dead that too is dead so tony's the one that was talking to us no, no tony whittington no. whittington Tony Whittington is going to be project manager for INSPEC. Now, that's a little... That's Tony Loden. Scary. Tony Loden. It's not Tony Whittington? No. Tony Loden. Okay, well, he himself isn't certified or registered. I mean, these are our concerns. But there we go again, getting a huge envelope consultant, and you really don't know who's working on anything. I don't know why, if your interest is in the roof's repair or the roof's condition, you didn't just consider um, a roofing contractor. I don't know why we're making this, we're blowing this so far out of proportion. But I have a question, it's not mine. Somebody else wants to know if all of these consultants provide internal protection. I would think we would expect that, but what is the answer? Oh, that you was what Inspec in said. They said they would. That was one of the things that they talked about. So, so group. if you went with someone else, wouldn't you just expect it? Uh, well, I expect you would, but I just, in the previous meeting with them, they brought it up right away that we had old 1998 fire protectant that was beginning to crumble and that they would be concerned to make sure that that didn't fall on the books. So that was, that was something that they specifically tonight brought up. Right, but what I'm saying is any contractor that walks in that library should have the same opinion, and if not, we should expect it. I'm just saying, if you go with the BEC or BTC and they didn't state it, that's another thing. These are just presentations. All the details aren't there. But I just I want to make uh, just a couple of points. I definitely was against even considering roof renovation because, like I said, I foiled all the repairs and nothing's been happening in the past three years. And again, we are in the midst of a pandemic. The library isn't even open like it usually is. And we're making plans to spend so much money on something we don't really need right now. So I don't understand why this is even on the table and why we've spent so much time trying to figure out how to handle vegetation and solar panels. And now you're going to decide if you really want to do it. What I'm trying to say is this is not the time to want to introduce a huge capital project like this. And we don't need to. And I, I would like everyone to remember it's just it's just a heavy load to be hitting the residents for when we find out later we really need something that's going to cost us. There's no indication we have to even replace this roof. So I'm, I, I mean, the, the whole idea of having these envelope consultants here at this meeting just shocked me because there was no mention of it. Supposedly our quadrennial reports, which are FQC and, and Kaler, they determine what we're going to spend, or what capital projects we're going to need. There was no mention during our budget meeting in June 10th, on June 10th, that we were even interacting with all these envelope consultants. But yet, the budget was approved, and now we're talking about doing this. That's not the, that's, that's just not transparency or accountability. So yes, this whole thing, I think, isn't even necessary because we don't have any problems with the roof to even, to even consider doing this. But that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you. Can I talk now? Absolutely, Ken. Thank you. First of all, the reason 
I saw something on PBS about vegetative roofs. Somebody at the meeting wanted to know about it. So I asked for that to be sent to everybody. Not that I necessarily wanted it, but I saw it. It was a question brought up. As far as I'm concerned, we were just in the finding out stage. That doesn't mean, in my opinion, that I'm agreeing to either the solar panels or the vegetation. From what I heard today, I would agree with neither. Secondly, or thirdly, or whatever the heck it is, I think we need to have somebody do a good and thorough exam of the roof so we know where we stand. They've all said, if we feel we can patch it so it'll last you another five or six or however many years, I think that's stuff we need to know. Personally, they all sound eh, close, so I, but I feel we need to have a good exam. And the, what I see of having one of these consultants, which at first I thought was kind of crazy, is the fact they're a layer of protection against a contractor, a roofing contractor, who might come in and do a shoddy job. Thank you. Yes, Carol. Actually, if you, um, if you hire a roofing contractor, your contract with that company will provide you also all the protection you need, or you wouldn't go with them. So you don't need to hire an envelope consultant to feel protected. He claims he's like the general contractor and he's going to oversee everything. But don't forget, we're not the only job that he has. So you can still get as many protections that these guys are offering if you went with a large roofing contractor. So I'm just saying, I think we're, we're taking it way out of proportion by even considering them. But then again, since I don't think the roof is even an issue right now, I'll, I'll be quiet. No, oh, you're valid, Brittany. Yeah, uh, yes, Linda. Just for the record, when was the last time um, all the roofs were done? Is that non-existent since we have so many different roofs, just so that the community understands. So the uh, west part of the building, the new part of the building, um, you know, like where, where the front door is right now, uh, that's the 1998 edition. So uh, that roof was done at that, at that time. Um, the old part of the building, which is commonly called the east end, of the building was redone in 2003. And um, uh, there's a big difference in the warranties because of the big difference in the, pro uh, the properties of the materials that are on the roof. The, um, uh, the newer roof from 2003 is a, is a product that's referred to as TPO, which is, as I understand it, basically a vinyl roof and that has a 15-year warranty. The west end of the building, the newer part of the building uh, that was from 1998, has what's called an EPDM uh, roof, which is basically a rubber roof. And that has a 20-year um, warranty. And, rough, you know, and, and roughly a 20-year life, you know, give or take. Okay, so... We're at that point where, where um, I completely agree that we need to get the roof evaluated mm -hmm. by a professional and to ensure that our buildings are safe and uh, they're not going to, you know, hinder all of our belongings so, or our staff. Yep. So, um, and, and we can stop I, this. So, right. you know, that what we're hiring these guys is for the next phase um, to, mm -hmm. to I, I believe we need uh, an extensive evaluation. I don't think anybody here can possibly say what we, that they know what we need and what we don't need. I right. mean, you know, none of us are roofing people. No. Um, and essentially we're hiring these guys to do the analysis <clears throat> and then come up with what we need. 
So if they come back <clears throat> and say, you know, whatever they say, we have the option to stop it um, because we're, we're going to be voting on each, um, you know, phase, especially the, the, the construction phase, whatever that may be, <clears throat> when we do get bids from uh, consultant or contractors. So, um, you know, I, I think, I, you know, everybody has said we've got spongy insulation. Sounds very bad to me to have spongy insulation. I wouldn't want that myself. So uh, I think we need somebody to go up there and really do a forensic analysis of what we need. Uh, <clears throat> you know, BTC, again, it seemed like it was possibly very costly, but I do agree that it's difficult to um, figure out, you know, exactly what it's going to be. But that's why it's a, it's a phased approach. And at each phase, it gets a little clearer as to what the costs are going to be as we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, actually, uh, I think this is a great time to do this because the library isn't open. Um, it's it's a, a more minimal um, invasiveness to the operations of the library. So uh, in that regard, I think it's a great time to do this. And, but, and, uh, no, Tim, no. If I could just interrupt, just to be fair, we are actually opening up to patrons on Wednesday for express checkout. So we kind of did lose our, our window a little bit. Okay, well, if they can get to it tomorrow, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen immediately. I mean, yes, I agree. I know. Be, they were talking April 1st, too. So, I mean, yeah. you know, we don't know. I, I'll speculate. Right. Anyway, that's my opinion. Uh, Carolyn, you had your hand raised. You know, regarding um, the uncertainty of the cost, um, if you decide that you favor one over another, couldn't you go back to that particular consultant and tell them, you know, like one of them said, we don't have an endowment, so we really can't, we don't have endless money, and maybe you could just request a more structured um, cost breakdown from them. And, you know, it, there's a little give and take in every agreement, and maybe we don't need to just take some, you know, very generalized percentage breakdown or some some amounts that seem indefinite again you know we're, we're we're based on taxes and we don't even know how well those taxes are going to be coming in so I, I would think to just you know try to push a little further on getting some definitive pricing or get it within line would be you know would be worth uh, you know well, trying it. BEC seems to me to be pretty straightforward it says right on their last page that it's ten thousand dollars down, and then that covers all their um, analysis and design. So that's clear. Then twenty thousand dollars on bid delivery. So that's after we uh, agree to have a um, a contractor, and then it's they have six percent of the total cost. So um, it's it's like their minimum is thirty thousand, and then whatever the percentage of the total cost is. I think it's pretty clear. Yeah. We're, well, I, I've heard that it's not. I'm just responding to other trustees. But wait a minute, we're paying twenty thousand dollars for someone to create a bid. Uh, did you look on page five of the BECs proposal? Right now, I'm not. I'm listening to what you just read. Well, I'm, okay, the terms are ten thousand dollars down. Okay, so that that's if you read it, it was there. Uh, twenty thousand dollars upon bid delivery. So Balance that is. For what? Well, I'm just I, I'm, I'm reading what they said, Carolyn. I know, and I'm asking. We're going to give them twenty grand to provide us with a bid. Is it? Greg has his oh, hand no. up. They're not. They're not creating the bid, Carolyn. They're going out and getting bids from contractors, roofing contractors, right? You know. You don't understand. I believe somebody has to create a bid unless we're not going. Are we going to use Tony Whittington's? He already created a bid. No, 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 no. Whoever we choose now will be helping us create the bids. Okay, Greg, you have your hand. Yeah, if I, I can just maybe uh, clarify a little bit. Um, the 10,000 and then the $20,000, I view that as cash flow um, for them to keep, you know, and, and commitment so that they can see a cash commitment on our side and cash flow to them to defray their, uh, defray their costs in the early phases and then um, I don't know how well that, that cash flow uh, bears a relationship 
to the specific activities. But what we can do in the negotiation is is is, is explicitly carve that out, so uh, so that yes. there's, so that there's a better understanding. <laughs> overall cost, you're right, Tim, is six percent of you know whatever the cost happens uh, happens to be. I assume if we cut off, you know the uh, the process, let's say after the evaluation, um, you know that. Uh, you know, there'll be a different way to calculate the cost, maybe time and material, basically. Okay, Linda, hand your hand up. Okay, um, I, this is actually for Greg and Susan. Um, I understand that we vote, the board makes the decision um, if we want to hire which company. However, um, I'm just wondering, Greg, Susan, um, it sounded like um, InSpec had come in and looked at everything. Did the other two companies come in also yes. and look at our roof? Okay, um, this might be ethical question, I'm not sure. Um, but not only am I looking at the percentage um, and doing my due diligence in that way, but there's always some feeling that you may get that I can work with these people better than other people or you know I feel like these this company is going to be more efficient or going to I mean did you get a feeling for different companies or you feel that like you can work with a company more than others I don't even know if can I ask that question, <laughs> ask that question. <laughs> am I allowed of course, to? Of course. you can ask any question that we're allowed to answer um <laughs> Um, because, you know, I mean, sometimes when I've, you know, getting a new air conditioner, getting, you know, getting tuck pointing, there's just a certain vibe you get from someone and you feel like, hey, I could really work with this person. I feel that they're going to do best by, you know, my, you know, by my house or they really care or, you know, I don't know. I mean, I thought we had three great proposals. I think we have three great companies with experience, but it's a... <laughs> Quick, you know, um, it's just very quick to see them, you know, and you don't really get much in a presentation. If I if I may offer uh, the following, when we looked at um, auditing firms, mm -hmm. okay, right. so uh, we spent a lot of time, you know, talking to the auditing firms and uh, and so forth, and. Um, because it's a professional service, um, what do they call it in the code? I think it's professional and artistic services or, or something like that. Um, um, it, it does matter if you feel like you could work with a company to accomplish your goals. Okay, so I mean, you're not completely off base, you know, um, in asking that question because, you know, what you, um, what you, what you're not doing is buying a commodity. You're not buying a ton of X. You know, you're not buying a ton of paper. Correct. Okay. There's you're, many variables here. Yeah. Right. You're 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 buying expertise and trust and confidence and Correct. and and things of that nature. In addition to, well, I mean, no, really, that's about it. Because uh, you have to trust them to write the appropriate specification. Mm -hmm. Uh, fit it correctly uh, so that we're in compliance with the you know procurement rules. Um, when you go out for a roofing contractor, it's more about what are you providing at, and is it at the lowest cost and does it meet the specifications and do we think you can do it? Mm -hmm. You know because you know if um, you have a guy with one truck and uh, and two helpers and he's the lowest bid, you don't think he can do it. You know, I mean, we saw some of that stuff when we when we did the, you know, I think we did the the painting uh, bid, and we had the lowest bidder, and it's like you can't do this job. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no chance he was going to be able. Right, to do it. I felt like we did that also when we were getting the architect in our uh, construction company too when we did the remodel. I yeah, mean, those was... those are the same type of services. The, right. The, right. You know, those are professional and artistic services. Right. And I think those those um, two things are specifically outlined in, in that part of, of the code, of the statute. I don't know, did you have more to add, Susan? Well, I do, I do have a couple of thoughts. One is um, 
I do think I agree with you guys that it's three very good people. Um, I just want to point out that I think it's important to have an envelope consultant look at this, not just somebody specifically who works on roofs, because as one of them said at some point, it, it's all connected. The, the flashing, the walls, all of these systems all work together. And it's, it's really important that you understand that whatever you create up on the roof may have an effect on the rest of the building down, my, down the line. So I, I do think that that aspect of it is important. I do think they all seem very competent. I will say that, to be honest, um, the one that uh, kind of knocked my socks off a little bit when we spoke to them earlier is the two that came last, the uh, BTC, I think it is. They are local, that's which in, I like. No, that's, um, that's inspect. The two inspect, are, sorry. Eight, it's after 10. Uh, inspect. Yeah, they um, the, what I like, they had already talked to the village about some of the regulations that they would need to know about. They had already done a satellite view of the roof. They um, they are, like I said, the ones that t thought about the fact that there was this crumbling fire protectant that could get on the materials and needing to protect the materials. They talked a lot uh, in that interview about the nature of it being a library. So, um, that was part of what I liked about them, which is what you would expect from what we were just talking about, you know, having a feeling about something. They really seemed to be able to get in our shoes and have some understanding that this building has work that has to be done. They talked a little bit about, you know, when things would need to be, would it need to be outside of summer reading and things like that. I mean, they really, they had the experience of working on this kind of building. And that is not to say anything that I actually, I also like, um, I guess it is BTC. I really like um, all of his presentation with all of the testing stuff. And I know that Prospect Heights thinks very highly of him and that, that firm. And so, I mean, I don't really think you can go wrong here, but you asked, so I am answering. Thank you. And Greg, you never really said. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, you gave me nothing, Greg. <laughs> Greg, you're going to have nothing. to work with him. He's being so, politically correct. You know, well, he's uh, wearing his poker face. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I um, I will say that you know I uh, I thought all three of them um, you know had a uh, had a very uh, uh, decent uh, approach, uh, an approach that I agreed with. Um, you know, the two guys from Inspect seem you know a lot more grounded. You know, like somebody you're going to see in the neighborhood, uh, mm -hmm. somebody that you know that's a little more Chicago than, you know, than uh, than the other folks, and you know, a little more um, old school about you know getting it done, making it right, making it right, working it, working it, making it right. You know, and and um, you know, I mean, if you if you listen if you listen to uh, their client list. Um, I'm hard pressed to find a school district that they didn't mention that they're doing work for currently in some way, shape, or form. Um, and I don't view us as that different, uh, you know, compared to a school, you know, just in, in terms of, you know, the types of functions and so forth. And of course, you know, schools have their um, summer season when, when they're out, or I guess their corona season when they're out since spring. Um, but, you know, I think, um, you know, I think they really, um, you know, have a lot of good qualities that we, you know, should pay attention to. Um, now, having said that, um, I think, I think the board has to choose who they're comfortable with. Um, because you have to feel represented and so forth. And, the way that I view my job is to make sure that whatever you choose to do works and works in the best interest of the library. All right. Well, I didn't have uh, an overall consideration of either of any of these three. Um, I chose BEC mostly on its costing factor and inspect was, was so much more casual in their presentation. Um, but I do hear you, Greg, that, that um, uh, them working with the other school districts clearly indicates that they, they know what they're doing. So I don't, um, if, 
if you and Susan would, would are, have a leaning towards inspect, um, I don't have a problem with that and I can change my motion to reflect that. No, I, you know, Tim, I would prefer um, that you guys make your decision on your own. Um, okay. without, without, you know, I, I, I think if, if I spoke up and I said, absolutely, I can't work with these guys, <laughs> then I think you ought to pay attention. Sure. Um, but if you didn't and you chose them anyway, then like I said, my job is to make it work. Sure. Uh, as best we can. I, to be honest, I would table at this point and give everybody a chance to think and look at the proposals again and kind of digest a little bit because it is really late and my office is really hot. Okay. And yours probably are a little bit. I'm okay too. with that too. I just wanted to move it along. Oh, I get it. Oh, that's yeah. great. Um, is this something we can put on the agenda for Wednesday? It's on, yeah. It, oh, there, yeah. It's on there. Oh, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I did look at it, but not closely okay. apparently. So. Okay. okay, so I will uh, move to table. Yep, then. I second it. Is there a second? Okay, all right, table on right. motion. I guess you can motion do that. Yeah. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for spending the time. Uh, I, I think we need to vote in favor of tabling it. Oh, yeah, anybody? Uh, aye. Aye. Everybody's aye. Aye, 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 have it. We tabled it. Aye. And tomorrow is still 6.55? Wednesday. Wednesday. I mean, Wednesday. Yeah, I think you, uh, I think you're, um, your email for the Zoom meeting for the, seven. Of, uh, the, 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 the budget review is at six o'clock. It did. Uh, the Zoom changed. It would not let me set the time for 6.55. So I ended up sending it out for seven. Okay. Uh, I changed it. I've changed it on all the links to seven. And I think that we have to stick with that in the meeting. You know, we can't start the five minutes early that we usually do because it just would not let me do it. It was okay. Okay. So it's oh, it for the budget purposes then? Yeah, you have a public hearing before you have the regular meeting. And they do okay. usually just kind of flow into each other and they will at this point too. But um but yeah, it was it was bulking at me. So seven okay. o'clock. Well, all right. I appreciate your all time and uh, thank all you right. so much. Good night. Wait, night. move to adjourn. Oh, oh, yeah, uh, adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Oh. Well, make make a motion to adjourn. Second. adjourn. Everybody vote, yes. Yes, yes. 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 great. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night everyone.